Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audiblepodcast.com slash Sorgatron Media. Over 75,000 titles to choose from for your iPod, iPhone, or MP3 player. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time to attack. The Wrestling Mayhem Show 282. We got a great show lined up for you today. We got a great interview uh, with Andrew from WildcatBelts.com. A nice long one for you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ladies. Well, we got a hell of a crew with us today, of course, from right here in Pittsburgh. Done that. That's about right. Chachi, how you doing? Hey, guys. <laughs> That's a great introduction. To Chachi Shut says, your mouth. Ch- Whoa, wow. No, wow. it wasn't great. That was hostile. Yeah. It was Josh, hostile. says .net. Yes. Give me permission. For all of the video game needs. That's right. Professional gamer. That's what I do. And sometimes Batman. And I'm Batman. Yep. And from the Bad Bronx, New York, Mad Mike. Not Batman. I am not Batman. No, not but, Batman. But, but, but I know Nightwing. Okay. Okay. I'll give you that. Yeah. All right. He's awesome. And from roundabout Pittsburgh is Hot Wheels. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm not Batman. Also not Batman. The Dark Knight, but I am leading your way. No, um, Hot Wheels is actually the Batmobile. In the (laughs) (laughs) good one, good one. (laughs) That was wrong on so many levels. Wow. Okay. How are you, Sorg? (laughs) I'm. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I didn't introduce myself on this show. No. I'm fine. Things are going well. Good. Things are going well, and I'm over you at Sorgatron.com. Are you enjoying your night of podcasting? My night of podcasting is fun as usual, unpredictable as usual, uh, but we do have somebody in the studio that's not usually here. I know. Yeah. I've threatened to beat them with socks. No, not soap. that one. Not that one. I'm talking about DJ Lunchbox. <laughs> oh, not that hey, one. You're right. What's hey. up, DJ Lunchbox? Hey, what's up? I don't want to hit dogs. you with socks. I don't know what camera I'm... There it is. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, hot dogs? This is DJ Lunchbox actually live in the studio this week. It is a pleasure, pleasure, pleasure to be here. Fantastic. And we have... Um... Oh, no! It's Holy a Holy shit! It's a monkey! Jesus Christ! Stuff monkey is here and live in the studio! I'm not dead, folks. That's, I am not dead. That's the one... That that's I threatened to beat with uh, bars of soap inside of socks. That is the one. It's me, Stoke Monkey. Yes. Did you guys miss me? No. Well, I didn't either. I did. I miss you, Stoke Monkey. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. I really appreciate you uh, You missing me. Fucking cokehead. Uh, do, do you guys <laughs> My aim is getting better, though. I'm off of the coke. No, am, you're not. I am off of I the coke. I saw you doing lines off a hooker in the backyard. That was Smarties. I grind up Smarties. <laughs> Ground up smarties. Do you guys, uh, can I can I catch up for a moment? Can I catch up with you guys for just a second here? No. I know it's been a while since I've been here. I ran, I, I, it was too much for me. The politics were too much. I ran away from my responsibility. I'll admit my 40, 50 kids, you know, monkey children, whatever. Politics are a mess, all right? The point is, politics are a mess. So I ran away. And what better place to run than the rails? The hobo rails. That is where you need to go. All right, and if you haven't done it, I'm talking to you, Chachi. If you haven't oh, done sorry. it, look at me in the eye. Look at me in the eye. All, all right? right. If you haven't done it, I suggest you take a year, year and a half. I don't know how long I've been gone. Uh, ride the rails. Meet some hobos. It is absolutely fantastic. Okay, and first off, Stoke Monkey, I I don't want you hobo back. Hobo monkey. Hobo Ho- monkey. Hobo monkey. I don't want you back. All right. Stobo monkey. <laughs> Stobo monkey. You can call secondly, me Stobo monkey. Secondly, can we if, call you Stokebo? If you've ridden the rails for the past year, for the past two years, yeah, where's your hobo stick? That's a funny story. That's a funny story. I had the greatest hobo stick that anyone has ever seen. I could spin that hobo stick and carve myself out of sleeping space that nary a man in twenty miles would try and steal from. I me. don't believe you. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing that I learned about being a hobo. It doesn't matter if people believe you or not. <laughs> I, I kind of want to throw this bar of soap at your face. That's, <laughs> that's fine. I've had worse thrown at me. <laughs> um, Sobo Monkey, uh, 
Is because you were riding the rails for two years the reason you look like you just got off a bender and your head is all dirty? That's exactly right. There are no <laughs> <Okay>. showers. <laughs> it's it's an old hobo uh, saying. There's no showers on the rails, <laughs> except golden okay. ones. Um, anyway, the point the point of the whole thing is um, I got sick of eating you know beans in a can and everything like that, and I met somebody. I met somebody important. I met Hobo Joe. I met Dennis Gregory. And they inspired me. They remembered. They made me remember my important roots, that of the Wrestling Mayhem show, and that's why I decided to come back this week. And I'm back this week! I'm back! I'm back. I gotta catch a train right after the show, but for now, today, I have returned. I would just like you to know that I still don't like hobos. How do you not like hobos? Hobos are the flavor. They're like the paprika uh, that is uh, in the melting no. pot of America. No, they're not. They're did, like. Did you happen to throw change at Dennis Gregory? No, I was a hobo. I kept that change for myself. I stabbed him in the neck and took some of his change. Hobos are like the grime that you get between your toes after swimming in a public pool. Yeah, and you know what you do after that? You wash it off with some nice soap. Everybody loves a hobo. Nobody loves a hobo. That's why I personally burn down every hobo encampment I find. Oh, okay. That's fine. We're transient people. So we ride rails. Unless fuck you're burning, you, Stobo monkey. Unless you're burning down trains. If I have to to get rid of the hobos next, I will. <laughs> I, I I will burn down some trains. You fuckers. Wow. <laughs> Fucking hobos. Well, aside from... So, Batman, Batman really aside, takes wow. the homeless problem wow. in aside, Pittsburgh. Sir. Listen, listen. Oh. There is no ho- homeless problem. I've solved it already. <laughs> Fucking criminals. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Wow. Also, here's the wrestle fan from Corpus Crew. <laughs> <Ha! laughs> Dude, it's still woven in it. <laughs> the headphones are woven. I'm here, motherfuckers! That's the wrestle fan from Corpus Crew. I think, Christi, I, I, think I preferred Stobo Monkey more. In the studio. So, the true story. Chris, I didn't. I didn't. Off I, of I, I, Sorg, I didn't know that was the exit to that bit. <laughs> no! What bit? What bit? <laughs> we crossed okay. some bits here. The story is. <laughs> Wait. I found the stove monkey while I was walking the rails, Chachi. I killed him, and I skinned him, and used his helmet to sneak in to the Wrestling Mayhem show here tonight. Why are you looking at me? The camera can't see you. Wait, I think by helmet you mean head. (laughs) It's not a helmet if you'd steal it from someone living. That's true. Okay. It wasn't living when he stole it. The point of that is... Stoke Monkey isn't here anymore, and the Russell fan is right here in the studio after the two week suspension for your stupid uh, wellness policy that is bass backwards as far as I'm concerned. I don't think you're completely off it. Listen, you look really, stay the whoa, fuck whoa. off the Pop Rocks! Well, yeah, I, yeah I'm you're, getting, you're, you look wired, really you're sweaty bro. and wired. I am really sweaty. Guys, guys, guys I, th- I think we need to have an air. Yeah, so now oh. I don't need this anymore. Goodbye. I think we all. I think we all need to read our statements as to how Russell fan has heard. What are you saying, man, Mike? Russell fan, <laughs> Russell fan. Listen, uh, the real reason we have you here is because you have a problem. You you don't know why I'm here. Russell I fan. murdered the Stoke Monkey. No, no, and no. snuck in here. Oh, no, actually, we killed the Stoke Monkey years ago. No, you didn't. And <laughs> those are lies. I I was there. I was there. I witnessed the Viking yeah, uh, funeral for, um, the, for the Stoke. Honestly, may, I'm pretty may... sure you murdered a hobo that was wearing that to keep warm. <laughs> yeah, it you may killed been... Hobo Joe Junk Pan. It may have been one of his. It was a national treasure. It may have been one of his forty or fifty children. <laughs> yeah. Wow! But, so um, now that we're all here, the reason we asked you yes. to come here is because you have a problem. I don't have a problem. You do. Wrestle you fan. have a problem. Wrestle fan, we and care you... about you. Yes, we're your we family, do. and we love you. No, leave those on. <laughs> yeah. you need, you need, those need no, to stay on. I, I can't breathe no, no, out no, my no. ears. When you're here in the studio, you need to leave that on your head. Those so are you important. Hear people. Those, those are, are important. very important to what's going on We're here. all here. You're we're important. here for you, WrestleFan. But yes, we're here for we're you. We're here for you. I'm here for mayhem. Because you have a problem. <laughs> I'm here. Okay. For, where are the Pop Rocks? <laughs> <laughs> Where's your stash, Sorg? Where's your stash? Your addiction has caused me lots of pain. <laughs> I feel very sad when I see that you have been using again because I know that you are just a young lad and we have corrupted you with our indulgent lifestyles. 
I hope that you can use this time to write yourself and go to college and enjoy queso dip from your chilies inside your classroom. Thank you. Mm. Okay, so and my we response... love you, wrestle fan. Okay, so my response and to that... your mother. He's fuck you, and your mother. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Your mom actually did call me the other day. Did you call her back? Oh, I did call her back. All right, good. So, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> All right, Mike <laughs> Sorg, what would you like to say to the wrestle fan? Uh, my wrestle the, to the wrestle fan. I want to say welcome to the wrestling. Mayhem We're almost show. an hour. You in can the check show. us out at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com. You can also uh, comment on this and other bad skits over at uh, on Twitter <laughs> at mayhem show bad or skits. email us at <laughs> good times this wrestlingmayhemshow dot com four one two two zero six w s zero nine six seven zero. You can find us on iTunes, Blip TV, YouTube, Roku, Media Fly, Roku boxes. Yeah. You can leave comments you can subscribe and you can tell all your friends about the action here and you can take your pants off and you can take your pants off also you can check out the application why are you wearing pants to begin with we can try yeah that's the question of the day because this isn't uh, my house right no no it isn't uh, <laughs> but you also check out on the app the wrestling mayhem show app that wheels is showing off on his big tab 10.1 on an android device look at that right there Hot where dog. you can check out more of the and i think you got an error message and we also got it up in the bronx uh, on the broke. iphone app thing and uh oh, what did yours crash no but his did, <laughs> <Is it? laughs> well, mine they, didn't um, crash mine is awesome i would like to uh correct you i would like to correct you okay um they're not bad skits <laughs> this is comedy gold this comedy is gold, gold for the stage <laughs> for the stage <laughs> okay. lean back god damn it comedy gold <laughs> can't right. see lean shit. back I'll but hey this is the rest of the show we're fans we're digging this we got new stickers we got more stickers <laughs> You gonna, uh, did we run out <coughs> of the last ones? No, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. What did you do with the last I stickers? I, the last stickers. What did you do? Is, you can get more stickers, any of you, by sending a sassy. A what stamped address, did stamped you? Envelope to, to Wrestling Mayhem Show stickers. <laughs> sold them for whiskey. Media. You sold them for whiskey. You. Everybody's yelling at me. Dear okay. stickers. The reason we have asked you here today... Is because you have a problem. What do I have a problem with? with you have a problem with whiskey. I don't have a problem. You with do. Whiskey. I don't. You and do have a problem. You're whiskey. not drinking enough of it. And I we care a, about you. Problem. We care oh, look, about he's got you. Stickers. Where did all the stickers go, so Well, apparently, Mad Mike has them. <laughs> I have the stickers. Yes. <laughs> so I had to order more. Motherfucker. And now you can get stickers. And that's at 1535 Velasco Avenue, Pittsburgh, PI, 1521. Uh, send no. us a sassy. Send us a sassy. Yeah, okay, we'll send you stickers. Self addressed stamped envelope. That's right. Bitch! All right, let's get into it like we usually start it. Usually start it. Uh, uh, is the fan mail. Oh, fan mail! Fan mail! Fan mail. I got... You guys are so sad for the fan mail, man. Well, what is fan mail. Fan First mail. off, Top all right, of as like the fan voice mail. of the Riz, yeah. I get to read an email. That's a week old. Yeah, I don't know why he did so early. Because he's a jackass. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the voice of the Riz is cantankerous. So let me <laughs> let me bring up the fucking fan mail and the bullshit week old fucking well, Riz I, mail. I know uh, LB has an email he needs to read as well. Fuck. Oh my god, yes. there's no Pierre Calais email. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm. Here it is. Fuck yes. Uh, <laughs> you sound so happy for this email. It's a week old! Aw, oh, come on. He Do sent it. it after last week's show. Your mom's a week well, old. Well, no, he sent it last week because he's a fucktard. I know. Aww. That's what I said. WMS! By the time you read this, I will be sitting in a grave, unmarked, in a random cemetery, dead. That's not what? That's not true. He was in the chat room 20 minutes ago. I killed him. He's, he's dead. already a fucking liar. Oh, he's yeah. dead. <laughs> fucking no, actually, it says <laughs> WMS! <laughs> By the time that you read this, I will be sitting on the beach in an undisclosed location. Hint, I have not That's found... That's also untrue. Hint, I have not found Robbie E. or Cookie at all. Suck it and suck it hard. Especially you, WrestleFan. Fuck you. Dude, dude, you're bragging about being in New Jersey. Congratulations, <laughs> that's the lowest fucking thing on the totem pole. <laughs> Who vacations in New Jersey? I sent this Wednesday, so nothing really took place in... <laughs> 
Will you shut the hell up? <laughs> Everybody fucking steps on you. Everybody. And I know. You're yelling me. <laughs> Jesus. You were, you were the last one to do I it. I was. I'm sorry. So. I'm very, I, Chachi. Chachi, I, with all candor and salaciousness, I apologize to you. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. You're learning big words over at the newspaper. Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I sent this Wednesday, so nothing really took place in wrestling that really mattered. However, there was a story that slipped through the cracks of last week's episode, and it's the Boogie Woogie Man... Jimmy Valiant is getting his own documentary. What? Honestly, I think the craze of Jimmy Valiant and other old stars who are getting third-party documentary deals is because of ESPN Classic bringing old episodes of UWF and AWA. You've always had, though. I'm not going to lie. The first time I heard of Boogie Woogie Man is due to those shows. No YouTube required, WrestleFan. Fuck you. Not only do replays like AWA and UWF show you stars that you don't normally have on WWF, but they also show how weird superstars of the recent past looked like. Has anyone looked how different and roided up Big Scott Hall was when he was in AWA? Or how a bull cut on Shawn Michaels looks weirder on him than... No, that's the end of the sentence. Yeah, so it really is in the sense. By the way, do you think I can pull off the tattoo across the forehead look? Yes. Especially <laughs> if it says dickhead. Oh. Asshole. <laughs> no, just get one that says M play backwards. <laughs> Asshead. What the fuck is that? Oh well. Play me off, Dancing Christian. <laughs> oh, Dancing Put Christian. that up, put yes. that up. You gotta please. bring up Dancing Christian. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is pretty good. That's tremendous. <laughs> I apologize if you're on audio on so many levels at this point. The dancing Christian is pretty cool. I can't see Look it. at him go. I Look at him it. go. Oh, yeah. I can't Dan- see it. All right, oh, dancing yeah. Christian redeems Riz's entire email. But, um, yes. that's not done yet. Until next time, GTL. What? what? Sorry I can't be at Mayhem Studios in person to meet the Wrestle Fan and the Wrestle Fam. Riz. There is no wrestle fam. There is no wrestle fam this week. No. This you time. need to put the microphone closer to your face. Me? Yeah, dude. It's yes. all the way over there. It's your all mom. The way Look how close mine is. Because I threw Look it. Close is I st- threw Stunt Monkey's head at it. No, it needs to be here, oh. between you and the laptop. Raise it. I know you're usually raise there you it. Go. How do I raise Off it? To your face. Raise it. There he is. All right. There it is. All right. Oh, now, now look at now look talk. At, look at sword. Look at. Now look at the microphone. Now talk. Hello! Oh god! Wow. <laughs> We're gonna ah, that's We're gonna too loud! How do I keep it up? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Okay. Oh my god, you are too young for that problem. Viagra. Wrestle <laughs> <laughs> fan, just stop there. thinking about okay, baseball. Right there. Okay, fuck. Okay. I'll rest okay. it on my laptop. Turn, turn the knobs. Turn the knobs and tighten it. <laughs> <laughs> We're in an opposite oh, it. This makes up oh, for man. all of our to all of our it's audio not. listeners. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. makes up. To... Yeah, all Not right. that knob. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one over there. LB. The fucking. LB. Will you stop playing LB. with knobs on the show? There. LB, you do you have your email? I do. Okay, I do. Good. All right, it's good. Um, <clears throat> once again, on the nice. Oh, it's got dragonflies. There's dragonflies on the uh, uh, stationery. And there's no subject. Uh, the Wolf's Thoughts on Failure has been cancelled until further notice. In its place is the brand new segment, Fuck What You Say! <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I, 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 honestly, I laughed when I read that email for the first time, and I, I walked around saying, Fuck What You Say! for like ten minutes. <laughs> Fuck What You Say! You know, I, I have to say before you continue, I liked the Wolf's Thoughts on Failure because the initials were WTF. Fuck what you say! <laughs> no, it wasn't. Exactly. You say. See, that was a setup. Thank you, Russell. Sorry, that was probably good. No, it wasn't. It was TWTF. Now that that's out of the way, let me first apologize <laughs> to my wrestling mayhem homies. LB, Sorg, Mad Mike, WrestleFan, Riz, Hot Wheels, and Chachi. My old email was hacked into, but alas, I got a new one. And I'm back and better than ever. My girlfriend just put me on to Justin TV, so I have been watching Great Wrestling 24-7. Let's just say my bullshit meter is through the roof. All right, I watched this <laughs> stupid ass. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I watched this stupid ass promotion with these old stupid ass wrestlers and stupid ass finishes. I think you know the show. It's called TNA Hardcore Justice. Their opening <laughs> match was the X Division Triple Threat Championship match. Wow. Before this day, I was a big Lucha fan, but now I've seen the light. This match was a complete no sell spot monkey fest. Fuck, Fuck fest. fest. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Much better Excuse than me, the fest, I'm sorry. Shelly did great and was not the issue, but the pair of Kendrick and Aries did not put on a pay per view qual- paper pay- 
per view caliber match. To all those Aries and Kendrick fans who will give excuses for the clusterfuck match, fuck what you say! And eat a donkey at- <laughs> Eat a donkey dick, you bitch ass ninjas! <laughs> the knockouts tag team titles was okay. No issues there, but wow, Rosita is fine as hell. I'd love to impregnate that little Rican. <laughs> Rican goes to Rican. Yeah. Uh, now to segue, Devon versus the Pope was a great undercard match. Mickey versus Winter was okay. Crimson versus RVD, well, fuck what you say, TNA. That shit was <laughs> bullshit. How did Crimson go from Amazing Red's brother to fucking Goldberg? Ginger to Jew in TNA. I was, yeah, that's right. I was the first to say push the originals. Originals as Joe, Styles, and Daniels, not Crimsonberg beating RVD by DQ on on a butt fucking pay per view. <clears throat> Immortal versus Fortune was fucking epic. Great match, great finish, great job, TNA. Unfortunately, this pay per view went straight downhill from there. Damn, even the main event wasn't TNA proof. Angle had yet to defeat Sting cleanly, but it didn't stop there. Fuck what you say, in my black ass opinion. Why I turn. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. All right, let's back up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck in what your you black say. Ass opinion. Fuck what you say. But in my black ass opinion, why turn angle heel when weeks before you did the same thing to Anderson? Fuck what you say. TNA hasn't a clue what, what they're doing. <laughs> Considering the multiple shitty finishes, teasing turns, if I were a paying customer of this sad pay per view, I would have ripped my nuts off, fed to my turtle, and. <laughs> shed- <laughs> Ripped my nuts off, fed them to my turtle, and shed my ninja dick and donated it to a Chinese motherfucker. And if you don't believe me, fuck what, what you say. For that poor turtle. Oh, my and God. There's a, and there's a picture of the cookie monster. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. It's, giving it's the ankle up. lock it's to John up. Cena. There That's correct. Is. And there is music, too, but I don't know what that is. Spread, uh, spread my wings. We got you. We got Holy you. Holy shit. I need. To, I really. I need to start. I don't know if you guys out there have seen the movie Black Dynamite, but if you haven't, go do it. It's on Netflix, and it's the best movie ever made. And I need to start channeling Black Dynamite for these. Uh... Yeah. So you should have been playing this the whole time. Hold up. All right. The Wolf's Thoughts on Failure has been cancelled until further notice. In its place <laughs> is the new segment. Fuck what, what you, you say. <laughs> <laughs> Now that that's out of the way, first let me apologize to my wrestling mayhem homies. LB, Sorg, Mad Mike, WrestleFan, Riz, Hot Wheels, and Chachi. Word. See? This is, save this, because we're fucking playing it every time he sends in an email. This is (laughs) perfect. Wait, wait, this is, so is the wolf now officially homicide, uh, not homicide, um... Black Dynamite! No, not Black Dynamite. Can I read the uh, voicemail we got? ECW. Can you read the voicemail we got? Yeah. Can, can I read it in that voice with that music? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is this voicemail that you're reading? I don't know. We, there... we did. We did get a uh, a Google voicemail. That was translated. We got three Google voicemails. We got three. Yeah, yeah only, only one was translated. was translated. Only one was translated? Yeah. The one I, I'm not playing. I don't know. It says, okay, this is Russell Stand. You're going to be the... One listening to this random stuff to bring up when you talk about resolution. <laughs> you know that the last. And Eric Ryan or Curse back as he was being care dragged into the out of the ring side area. After their little of the deal okay, was that's, pain, that's enough. We get the idea. And cramping those little children, those little children running around <laughs> like over the one carrying that little carrier and shit. <laughs> that, that shit, was, motherfucker! Sheree world on the road for the fight. Man, I'm five. <laughs> <laughs> when you're gonna have to get me by the lock no, no, no. of, of gonna, but yeah, Bel Air this. Oh man! Fuck would you say? Fuck would you say? <laughs> oh, really? No, pain, was pain a and out. cramping but... those little children. I think that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hot! Dog. Anyways, yes, we did. We well, uh, wrestle fan and I, as he can, as you can tell by his his it's shirt, fucking hot in here. By his shirt, <laughs> he's really, really hot in here. <laughs> as you can tell by his shirt, we went to PWO's Resolution Four yesterday yes. or Sunday. So, Chachi, go take a poop. So, then, so Chachi, this is your poop. Oh, break. Chachi, I'm gonna. Are you gonna poop or smoke? I'm gonna poop. Oh, okay. Well spoken. <laughs> if you were smoke, um, I was gonna come with you. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, gonna gonna and, and, and if you're gonna poop, you. I'm still gonna go with you. I'm still <laughs> coming with you. I'm coming with you, Chachi. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? 
I got your back, bro. Watch out for the splash. <laughs> <laughs> we went to, re- we went to the resolution, and uh, you wouldn't you know it, as soon as we got our tickets, uh, we ran into Big Freaky. We ra- I, yeah. Wrestle fan ran into Big Freaky. No. I'm sorry, Wrestle fan. <laughs> No, so and Russell fan, or uh, Big Freaky sat with us the whole time, so but now I know who Rebus is and uh, and that was it was all right it was pretty yeah, nice it was pretty it was cool nice. to hang out and talk wrestling with Big Freaky Big Freaky I I what did I say uh, Big Freaky I think wants to change the wrestling industry so but he did he did start sending some voicemails back to us so let's see what we got here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck what you say. Fuck what he says. <laughs> yeah, he knows about Black Dynamite. <laughs> Best Shane email read ever. Other fans of the uh, Cleveland wrestling scene. Okay. <laughs> because uh, I will never forget when uh, Russell Fan made that comment. We were discussing Black Friday, which I don't think is so black. They've heard four people. What? The what? what are you talking like, that doesn't about? happen in know. the real world what all the time. What are you talking about Black Friday? I don't remember. But, uh, black Friday anyway, in November. Russell Fan made the comment that all those people got fired, but JTG still has a job. Oh, oh okay. Oh, this is where There's it's There's a guy with messed up teeth that, ooh, if he would have heard you say that, man... He would have been all up in your grill, homie. Because, man, <laughs> in case you didn't know it, JTG is the black Bret Hart. I don't know why, but he is. But as far as the rest of the show, man... First of all, LB, you look like you have a comment about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm puzzled. I'm puzzled over well, what's we happening learned, here. Well, we learned... One of the things we learned this, uh, or this past weekend at Resolution is that JTG is the black Bret Hart. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why he kept his job. And, I don't know, to... but I was pretty excited when I saw him on the show last night. You know what? There was. No, I do I do have a comment about that. Uh, it, it's simple. It's direct. It's straightforward. Fuck what you say! <laughs> Fuck, <it. laughs> Fuck what you say! You wait, wait. The only... Well, sorry, Mike. JTG is the black bet for heart. Yeah. That... That no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of with you on that. I'm kind of with just, you on that. JTG isn't even the black JTG. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, Is there a white JTG? I'm just saying there are people who do JTG's gimmick better than JTG. Okay. That's, okay. That's an agreement. There, there was a little bit more fight freaky. Fight I have about the show. Hey yo, I am sitting in the rain now. Just so I can make sure I have the best perception <laughs> for you guys as possible. What? I'm si- wait, um, wait, 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 hold on. The complaint about the show is Shima Zion not being there. Oh. Yo, know, even if it's because of TNA, they at least should have had him on the pre-show that wasn't aired on pay-per-view. And hey, Sor, can you make sure if Shima's going to be at the... Uh, I, I don't know. I have no bearing on if he's going to yeah, be a Cage Fury. I'm I, sorry. I'm not exactly inside on that stuff. Thing was, but oh. no, no. He, he's right. Because right here on the website, you can pull it up here. It says TNA Impact Superstar Shima Zion still. They haven't taken the stuff down from this weekend. Uh, he was advertised as such, and they was just uh, just dis- disappeared from the uh, four-way yeah. match. So. And I, uh, to, to me, to an degree, I understand it. It was an eye pay-per-view, mm-hmm. and I think TNA, you know... You know whatever they're gonna do about that whole thing. I I def there's a definitely a chance that he'll be there for Cage Fury. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know since it's a non yeah, you know, televised of, event. I, you were you were su- su- uh, uh, guessing that the reason he wasn't there is because it was an eye pay per view. He's got a TV contract now. Maybe they're not doing that. But right. still, a lot of times they let them honor their contracts. That's like true. They honor their engagements. Well, and no, I, WWE I think, does. WWE TNA does. doesn't. Okay. Deal. Okay, that's right. W- TNA takes over your independent bookings. TNA says, fuck your days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, But he's supposed to be a big deal in that Cage Fury. I really hope they're not pulling him at this point. I, re- I, I, say, I agree completely. I, you know, But you never know what, you know. Yeah. Uh, there is a little more. More questions, just a discussion for the show. Okay. One, I'm sure Sorg is going to mention that I made a fool out of myself in front of Greg Irons because I hadn't been listening to the show for about a month. That's right. What's up? Or all the way through. Well, much of it, anyway. Dude, you never listened to the fucking show. Was Irons' interview good enough to uh, get other indie guys and PWO guys specifically 
a shot at, at interviews on the show. Why don't you fucking listen yeah. to it? Yeah, there's that. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was kind of awkward because I was we, I was I, I went up to Gregory and I thanked him for the interview last week, and and Freaky's like, you should get him on the show. I'm like, it was on this week. I just thanked him, dude. Mm-hmm. So and and we've interviewed like five or six people that are part of the PWO roster. Well, I, and I think what he's saying is, I mean, we've interviewed people that were I, IWC guys. I mean, well, we did an interview uh, Cross, uh, you know, because, you know, we ran into him at Shakar and everything. Right. Uh, we haven't, this is, you know, other than Joe coming on this week, we haven't been like, hey, you're doing a PWO show, come on. Uh, and, you know, I'm not a, I'm not against that or anything like that, but we haven't really done much for indie interviews well, in the last couple of months. I, 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 have a, I have a statement for Freaky here. <laughs> freaky, you freaky, you know you can go on and listen to your Dave Lagana podcast. Oh, yeah. You can listen to your Cole Cabana podcast, but you should support some fucking indie wrestling podcast like the Independent Wrestling Mayhem Show. All right, <laughs> so fuck what you say. Uh, listen to the actual show before you call in and ask stupid shit like, "Oh, how'd the interview go?" Why don't you fucking listen to it and then determine how shit goes? If you want, I can pay for the podcast for you because it's fucking free. <laughs> um, um, actually, actually, do support uh, Cole Cabana's art of wrestling podcast. We like them over there. Oh, oh wait, I'm not saying don't someone? support them. I love both their podcasts. Did I miss us ripping saying. on someone? Yeah, big freaky man. Oh, <laughs> man. I would, I would pay a very high price to see a a uh, 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 cage gravy match between Mad Mike and Big Freaky. Cage gravy. Mm-hmm. Cage gravy. In a cage I would fucking covered in gravy. destroy him. Fuck what you say. Fuck what you say. No, you, you don't what say you it say. right. Shut up. You're too Wait, white. How about you, Wheels? Wheels, you haven't said anything for a bit and he's showing off his belt. I've been gravy. saying fuck what you say all <laughs> Yeah, okay. Oh, all right, all right. There's that. All right, and thank you for your opinion. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> what show number is I mean, this? we do we do 282. Shit, wrestling Mayhem Show the 282. 282. Fuck, fuck what you, you say. Yes. Uh, I mean, we we talked to a bit of independence here. We're trying a few different interviews here. I mean, it, it's been pretty mixed, right? Dude, Freaky, if you want to get us interviews, you contact these motherfuckers and tell them, hey, <laughs> come be on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Have them get in touch with the store again. Good times at Wrestling Mayhem. There, there you go. There you go. And we'll I mean, schedule seriously. a goddamn interview. Who do, you, who do you want? CC, Good Times, and whoever you want to interview... So, oh, no, no, seriously. No. I mean, yeah, seriously. Because because no. it's not that easy to get independent uh, wrestling interviews as you might think. There's a lot of people we've 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 asked. There are a lot of people we've asked that never got back to us. Freaky uh, independents, bigger guys. It doesn't matter. There's a p- people that have said outright no to us because they don't know what we are. They they're think they're too just a, important. They, yeah, they think they're that we're just a bunch. Of, you know, we're like, oh, we do a podcast. They're like, oh, you're just a bunch of jackasses that talk about wrestling on the internet, and I'm not going to spend my time on you. And like that's been the, the attitude I get from some of these guys. I'm not going to say who or where or anything like that, but there are a lot of guys I'm sure Freaky would love us to talk to that have worked in PWO, that have worked in AIW up there in the Cleveland area, and we we can't get them. They won't come on. And But then we get guys like Dave Lagana. We get guys like... You know Andrew that we'll be talking to here in a minute. That are, Jimmy that are Superfly great guys Snooka that gave us a chance. Give us a chance, and we have a Jimmy Snooka, and we have great conversations with. And so those guys that are just looking at me in the face, oh, you're a podcast. I don't know who you are. I'm going to say no. Are missing out because they're not going to have a great conversation with us because we pride ourselves and we give them the respect. And, ha- and and you know I hope we having good interviews. Speak you know? the truth. Exactly. Uh- Unless you're like under four feet tall, that's usually when the bar gets a little bit, a little mm-hmm. bit, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that was that's when we started having trouble. Um, yeah, they're a little short tempered. Oh, oh, oh. oh. So big freaky, big freaky, and they don't true. like the people that we have interviewed on here. Everybody with me now? Fuck what, what you say. say. And speaking of which, that, other than that, PWO Resolution was the shit this week. It was the shit. Uh, uh, did you have any impressions from it, there, Wrestle fan? Uh, there were a lot of a lot of good stuff. Definitely, uh, the Nautica, great, great place to hold a wrestling event. Mm-hmm. Nautica? No. Yeah. Nautica. Yes, that Nautica. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I thought they tore that place. No, down. no, no. They put a, they put a tent on it. Now they had to do wrestling shows as well. Now. Oh. So. But yeah, great yeah, action. Pretty cool. It, it is really very cool. cool. Great action from, uh, well, two friends of the show, we, and one uh, non-friend of the show, uh, Johnny Gargano, Matt Cross, uh, Josh Prohibition, the three, big full circle three-way match was amazing. Mm-hmm. Very, mm-hmm. uh... It was tremendous, and it was, a uh, they didn't go 
outside of the ring side area. It was no. a really good match. It was a great match. It was, you know... Matt the, Cross is a friend of the show. Yeah, uh, yeah he's, he's, I mean, Josh Prohibition. Yeah. We, we haven't I'll talked to Josh Prohibition. Josh. Okay, my bad. But okay. no, uh, great match there. Uh, world title match between Brain or Jason Bain and Crimson. Holy fucking shit. That match was... Out of that was a good. That was a good hardcore, not bullshit kind yeah. of match. Uh, here's a picture for you on the video uh, of of the arena. This is this is earlier during the the pre show match, so it wasn't completely filled out. Uh, but you, it's a tremendous view. We're, I, I I gladly play general admission. I was there last year too, uh, and we're like halfway up the bleachers, and you see everything. It's tremendous. Yeah. You know. Oh so. wow! It's outdoors. Yeah, it's outdoors. I mean, there's oh, there's, that's fucking awesome. Like I said, there's a tent over the area. But that's about it. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. And they have a live band. Uh, here, yeah, Chachi, peek over my shoulder so you can check that out. You remember this place? We saw a ICP about twelve years ago at this place. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's really cool, and I like what they do with it. Like, you know, it, it was really funny when the the, the guy was say? was it the guy was freaky or or no, it was I think it was freaky. That I was saying it's like the WrestleMania, yeah. Of uh, of of the Indies, which is what I've been saying for a long time. Mm-hmm. So very very great show. Uh, main event: Kevin Nash and uh, Omega and Draven versus Brody mm-hmm. Lee and Marion Fontaine. I was very excited to see Kevin Nash. Yeah, a lot no, of people were. And, yeah, and, and I mean, it, you know, you kind of expect Nash is going to be like the hot tag, and he's just kind of there, and Draven oh, yeah. does all the work. He took a lot of stuff, and he was very involved in that. Yeah, he match. was very 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 much involved. Um, even and like and you know saying that Nash was going to be the hot tag, Draven was the one that got the hot tag in the whole thing mm-hmm. and the pin and the pin, you know. So I I have found a new respect, let's say, for uh, Kevin Nash. Was the one I don't know if we it was in conversation between the two of us, but that Kevin Nash is great when he's not around, like uh, Waltman, Waltman and, and, Paul. and Paul. It 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 feels yeah. like it brings the rest of them down. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Did anyone start a Super Shredder chant? No, no. No, no, unfortunately. <laughs> no. no, unfortunately. But uh, definitely great show. Uh, if you want to go check them out, go to uh, PW... Oh, one more note we wanted to make uh, going on the Kevin Ash thing. Um, friend of the show, Facade, uh, mm-hmm. surprisingly enough, at the interview tables, had, or at the uh, autograph tables, had a bigger line than Kevin Nash. Yes, he did. The kids love him up there. The kids really do love Facade. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, it was it was surprising. Um, well, well, Nash and also uh, Tio Santana, who was also there signing autographs. Facade had a much bigger line than the two. Now, granted, uh, Nash wasn't there during intermission. He was there True. at the beginning as people were walking in. So, but still, come on, Facade. Yeah, had, fa- Facade definitely had the uh, facade. Facade, the peninsula. Facade. <laughs> Michael, the peninsula of facade, but. It was good. Gory, Gory with Jason Gory, another friend of the show here from the area. Uh, he, I, he had a good. Ma- he was in a three way actually with Bobby Beverly and and this one Jason Shima Boy. was supposed to be a part of. Yeah. And and, uh, and that was pretty cool. Everyone loves a good three way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh. Oh. Giggity, giggity. That, that reminds me, wrestling Thumb fan. Chuck. We've brought you here for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the say, fuck out of here. say hello to my little friend named Johnny Erection. <laughs> Johnny Erection, Johnny Erection. No, thank you. Or the the uh, the uh, Chachi Crotch Nubs. The fuck, <laughs> Chachi, I have the, Chachi I have Crotch the, Nubs. I have the Crotch Camp tonight. Okay. Oh, you, that, you're gonna get Crotch Camp tonight. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. <laughs> Oh, come, Chuck. I, I mean, Happy sorry, 18th listen, if you birthday, struggle, little buddy. If you struggle, you're going to make it worse. My yes. birthday was two months ago. <laughs> I, yeah, but you weren't here two months ago. <laughs> oh, you can really see you from my laptop. That's awesome. I don't know what's going on. Well, anyways, P- PW was great. Go check them out. PWWrestling.com on YouTube. They have all their ep- episodes. Oh, God. And that was iPay-Per-View. I, I, the, I, yes. I can't wait to hear how, how they did on the iPay-Per-View. We can only hope uh, they did pretty well. So I didn't order it. <laughs> thanks, Josh. <laughs> oh, I didn't order. I didn't either. think you would. I, I wasn't home. That. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, we were there. Uh, <laughs> I was speaking of eye pay per views and ordering. I haven't started getting paid yet, so I didn't order anything. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> I, I kind of forgot about eye pay per views. 
Uh, the uh, JCW had to cancel their eye pay per view. Yeah, which has been this is at least the second time they've had to do this too. Uh, the, the the speculation was that because it was so close to the gathering that we talked about a little bit ago. But I still want to try that out. Some it's only five bucks, and, it, and like we were talking about, the gathering is which is this weekend. I think their eye pay per view for that is going to be uh, it, it is going to be online, and that, that looks like a really good card with a bunch of old old people, old people, yeah, old older, people. older wrestlers. How does that work? We want Scott to see. <laughs> Yeah, I know. They're all, I don't know. I've never been to their Illinois place for the gathering, but I know when they were in Ohio, it was pretty desolate. No, what I mean was, when it, well, I mean desolate, yeah. Um, but their eye pay per view, because mm-hmm. the wrestling is spread out over three. Well, at the time it was three days. Yeah, they. I think they. they well, they used to be because they had their big bloody mania the one year, and it looked like it was only one night. So they might just have like one or two shows. Yeah, over this, the course this of the wasn't because it's a four day fest. Yeah, and, you know, to have re- I, I think they, they they knocked down the wrestling from every day when they started to make it a little more serious. So, yeah. So on that note, is if, if there's no more, there, indie, well, there, there is an AON report. There is hot damn from one Bobby F J Town. Oh, who got arrested shot? and kidnapped this week? Oh, gee, no. <laughs> uh, it's from Sweet Nips Bobby J. Sweet, <laughs> Sweet Nip Bobby J. Okay. All right, what's good in here? All right, let's start it off. Uh, the day de- they did a year interview so far, leading up to War for Territory Four. So pretty much the in studio segments were the highlights this week. What? <laughs> <laughs> Drew Shannon is is handed a paper that is pre- presents is requested for an interview in Studio B. Drew is in Studio B. The door behind him opens up and Kes Edison walks out. He stated that he escaped ISP's compound when Colin Blair bombed it. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) There was a bombing. They've gone from uh, felonies to terrorist acts now. I know. It's crazy. (laughs) Maybe we should get someone on that. I (laughs) love... Uh, Kes... Kess says he is back to get AON back on track for War for Territory. Kess has decided that at War for Territory 4, they've signed the main event. Four-way dance for the PA heavyweight title and total ownership of the AON. Each owner chose someone to represent them, and the winner gets the PA championship, and that owner gets the ownership of AON. (laughs) WWE! Well, that's what I was saying. Well, Bobby told us last night. That's what I was saying. It reminded me of... uh, WrestleMania 16, uh, McMahon yep. in every corner match. Yep. yep. Um, AC Norway has chosen Bam Bam Hassel. Otis Hellenbach has chosen James Ford. Kess Edison has chosen PA heavyweight champion Shane Malice. And Samantha Sanders has chosen Randall Fairway, which makes Kess angry as he storms off to make some phone calls. So the main event at War for Territory 4 for total control of a- AON and the PA Heavyweight Championship is Bam Bam Hassel versus James Ford versus Shane Malice versus Randall Fairway. Where the hell is Manchild in all good this? Question. Damn straight. Damn straight. And Manchild is fighting the big show to referee the match. <laughs> there, you there you go. And is that the end end of the AON that is the report? End of the AON report Fantastic. I think it's time that we kick it to our interview. Kick it. And talk about some belts, guys. All right, guys, we're on the line with our guest, uh, Andrew Lazarchik of Wildcat, WildcatBelts.com. I messed up the easy part this time. How are you doing tonight? Oh, we're doing great. How are you guys? Thank you for joining us. You, I was amazed. You're, you're actually from uh, down the road in uh, Latrobe, PA. We're in Pittsburgh, of course. Now we're in Latrobe. L- Latrobe? Yeah. Is that how the locals call it? <laughs> That's what the locals say, so get it right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> My buddy Will's back there knows all about it. Latro, exclusive yeah. state to Latro, Pennsylvania. Yes, yes. I'm not. I guess I'm not. I'm not an original Pittsburgh. No, I'm sorry. you're not. I'm not. I'm. Sure, I, I don't know it. So, Latro, Pennsylvania. I don't. I don't say Beach View, do I? I say Beach View. Yeah, exactly. What? What? I don't know. You look on Google Maps and it's Beach V for some reason. Mm. That was really weird. <laughs> Google screws a lot up. It does. It does. So, um, oh, you, you've gotten a lot of, uh, th- this past week, Andrew, uh, you've gotten a lot of uh, 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 props uh, for the recent uh, Broski belt. From- yes, I have. The Zack Ryder Internet Championship belt. That's right. We'll bring it up here in a second. Uh, now, you do, and then and that brought us to, to your site, and you do a lot more than that. Can you tell us about what you're doing over there at Wildcat, Wildcat Belts? 
Sure. It's uh, wildcatbelts.com. I've been uh, making championship belts professionally for about six years now, since uh, May of 05 is when I officially made my first belt and sold it. Um, I make belts for WWE, TNA, uh, a lot of other um, special event belts like the uh, Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Championship. I've made that belt for the last four years. If you watch the event this year, they had a female championship belt this year for the first time. It was a pink belt instead of a yellow mustard belt. Um, I've made belts for uh, Beth Phoenix, uh, an actual belt buckle, like a real belt buckle, not a championship belt. Um, you can see that on her first action figure, the photo that they use on the box. She's wearing that belt, which is kind of cool. Um, United States belt that they use on Raw for about the last three or four years. Um, that is uh, my belt. Uh, and then, of course, as we were just discussing earlier, the new TNA World Heavyweight Championship belt I made um, probably by, well, I, they actually got it in October of last year, but they didn't start using it until March of this year. So. Excellent, excellent. And now I was reading the history on your site and didn't realize you have, you have quite a, a history with uh, you know, local and uh, professional wrestling uh, and, and all around. Uh, so you're, you're not just involved with the belt making for it. Not well nowadays I am, but mm -hmm. yeah, for the last uh, back in '96, I broke into the indie scene here. Actually, my first promotion I worked for was Steel City Wrestling with uh, notorious Norm Connors, who mm -hmm. later became the promoter for IWC. Uh, he and I uh, broke in together. He used to just do shows here and there, excuse me, and then uh, he was in with uh, PWX out of McKeesport, PA, and uh, he got me in there. I did some commentary. Um, and then eventually started managing, and then we broke off from there and started running Steel City Wrestling full-time here in uh, the greater Pittsburgh area. And we did indie shows, you know, brought, you know, local guys, and then, you know, mixed in, you know, Mick Foley, Blue Meanie, Tom Brandy, that kind of thing. Um, mixed those guys in, and we did shows for, oh, several years, and then Norm kind of stopped running shows and I kept managing and refereeing and ring announcing. And I did promote some shows as well here in Lake Trove and Irwin. Um, I'm not, sh to be honest with you, I'm, I don't want to geographically localize ourselves because these towns might not mean anything to some of the people listening, but <laughs> uh, just in the Pittsburgh area, we did shows. Um, but I always wanted to make belts. So I uh, eventually just started making belts and quite honestly, um, you know, stopped, doing shows uh so much and stopped ring announcing and things like that and just kind of really focused in on doing belts so that's really what i do now i still like to visit the shows here and there but don't really do much on the shows anymore excellent excellent uh sorry i'm dealing with some skype issues here <laughs> that's all right <laughs> uh we're, so don't, don't mind the sounds i'm trying to get rid of them um so uh how how did you uh, uh, get involved with like say WWE and TNA? I mean that that's uh, they, you know, there's a lot of wrestlers that can't get get involved with them, uh, you know, and, and and you're you're making belts for these guys. Sure. Well, um, you know, you've probably heard it before from different guy guys that you know make it to the uh, the bigger promotions. You know, nobody's gonna call you. Uh, you know, you gotta make you gotta you're you're gonna be your best prom you're, you're, you will be your own best promoter. So I, um, you know, once I was making belts, when I first started making belts, I, I knew they were good, good enough to sell, but they weren't exactly the greatest thing like you would see on WWE TV or um, TNA at the time. Um, but as I grew, you know, I got in the business a couple years, my belts started getting a little bit better, started getting a better technique, really finding my niche as to how to make them uh, really well and make them you know, TV usable. So once I got to that point, I, uh, I literally spent my own money and made a belt for the WWE and, uh, contacted them and got the belt in their hands. And, um, actually dealt uh, directly with Stephanie McMahon and, um, she liked it and they were having problems with their other belt maker. Um, so they were looking for somebody else. So they just started sending me some orders. You know that that's something I always we always wonder is uh you know when you when when they have the belts for like WWE like obviously we have two championship belts going on right now uh with everything with CM Punk and Cena Do these guys have like just a line of belts or they really just have one they're carrying around from show to show 
Uh, what they do is, um, well, WWE has more. Um, basically, what they do is they have a house show belt and a TV belt. Okay. TV belt is really just that. That's what they use on TV. They only use it one day a week, so it stays in good shape. Because, as you know, even just on the TV shows, you know how these guys, they don't really care about the belts usually. They mm-hmm. just, like, just take Steve Austin, for instance. He used to throw it the whole way down the ramp. You know, he doesn't care. So, you know, they have one belt that should theoretically stay in good shape so it looks good on TV. And then they have a second belt that the guys have to lug around and take them to all the house shows. Mm-hmm. WWE has, I think WWE actually has more than just two of each, uh, but I know TNA just has two of each. Mm-hmm. So did you have to do copies when they when they uh, started taking on the U.S. belt then? Yeah, yeah, they ordered two at a time, so. Okay. Okay, nice. How do the, the, the plates go uh, separately, or you handle those too? What's that? The name plates that go on them? But yeah, they order those as they need them. You know, once the, whoever wins the belt, then they call me up and say, hey, we need a Dolph Ziggler or Kofi Kingston nameplate. So, got to get those to them as quickly as possible. That's always difficult because it's making belts is not uh, an easy or not a quick process. Yeah. Yeah. No matter how big it is or small it is, like a lot of people say, well, I just need a small one. Can you do that quicker? And it takes the same amount of time no matter what. So mm-hmm. even if it is a small nameplate, there's still a lot of steps involved. So it still can take several weeks just to get that. So that's always nerve wracking because, you know, you're dealing with WWE. You don't want to let them down. And mm-hmm. they're, you know, they're a huge conglomerate and they, they don't want to hear excuses. So but we always get it done. So it's no problem. And can you tell us a little bit about the process? Um, I mean, they, everything looks great. The, the 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 art on them, the etching. I mean, it looks it looks fantastic. I've seen the IWC belts close up, and of course, the one wheels brings to the shows from your, from you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit of that process that goes into making these? Well, I don't want to give away too many secrets, but basically, <laughs> if someone places an order, um, you know, they tell me like if you want to come to me and say you want a championship belt, um, you know, basically, I say what. Well, do you know what you want it to look like? Some people know exactly what they want it to look like. Others people have no idea. Some people just have a basic idea. You know, I want my logo and I want it to say world champion. Then you can do whatever you want. So basically I take that information and go on my computer and um, just uh, start putting together a design, whether it's based on something else I've already done. Sometimes that's nice because it goes a little bit quicker. Um, or if they want something totally from scratch, then obviously that's going to take a little bit more time. And then I just go back and forth with them in the emails with proofs. And I say, how's this look? Do you want to change this? Do you want to add that? Do you want to take this away? And we just do that till we get it. And then got to get the plates manufactured, engraved, uh, and plated. And then they come back to me. I got to do all the painting by hand. And in the meantime, after the artwork's approved, I get all the leather work done. I do all that right here myself by hand. Um, and then you know, put it all together, glue it up, and uh, send it on out. Nice. Now, nice. Uh, oh, like, this is sort of like interject here. Uh, one of the things is like the creative belts I see, like you know the Zack Ryder belts, like you mentioned the uh, Beth Phoenix one. Uh, what I'm looking at right here, the uh, the Dragon Gate Dream Gate belt. Yeah. If you see it, if it has a little, um, I guess, uh, stopper that you can move, and it will unlock a. Uh, portion of the belt now do you just have these ideas or is it something that like the company comes to you and say oh can you try something with this mm-hmm. well that one was uh based they that was for a uh, dragon gate over in japan um they had that's the i believe it's the open the dream gate championship they have some different style names for their titles or they have the open the dream gate open the twin gate is their tag team title name um but anyways um that was kind of based loosely based off their existing belt that somebody in Japan made where it's it's literally being this dragon gate it's literally a gate that opens up on the belt and then on the inside of that gate is the name of the champion and then you also notice on across the bottom of it there's a um, basically a bar where you hang <clears throat> excuse me you hang keys on it mm-hmm. and the theory is every time the champion successfully defends the title the challenger has to give him the key and they hang it on the belt so you can see how many times the champion successfully defended his title and if he loses and the key theoretically unlocks the gate they open it and put the new nameplate in wow wow that's yeah that's awesome. my most uh, involved belt i've ever done you should i don't know if you're going to be flashing pictures or anything up on As we, do while have, we're talking mm-hmm. here. we have it up right now we played a little bit of the video of them opening it yeah uh, it's, it's it looks tremendous 
Yeah, that was my definitely my very most elaborate and expensive one I've ever done. But um, that was uh, that was a lot of fun doing that. Wow. Well, I, how I, much? Oh, go ahead, Josh. How much did uh, that belt run? If we can ask it's that. Several thousand dollars. <laughs> up there, up there. More, more well, than that. I figured. I was just looking for a plus shipping and handling. Yeah, I, I, was, just, Rider. I was just looking for an air. Uh, and, <laughs> You, know, you have some ideas? A neighborhood. I was just looking for a neighborhood. <laughs> We're going to look for the Chachi Plays Bell for the next, week, next no. year. <laughs> no offense. I just couldn't afford it. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't I don't think a sponsor is going to sponsor the cost of a belt being made. The cost of a belt being made. That's that's kind of a good question. You uh, you know, we do see... Uh, we were, we, we were, we were going through the, the the site the other night, and some of some of them, like we mentioned, the Nathan's Hot Dog. What What is the most interesting non-wrestling, non-MMA belt but that maybe even surprised you when you got the order for it. Oh boy, <laughs> wow, that's a good question. Let me think about that. Well, the Nathan's belt's always an interesting one because of just exactly what it is, you know, for eating hot dogs. I did one for Waffle House once for a waffle eating nice. contest. <laughs> that was an interesting one. I mean, the Nathan's one last year they started putting the Pepto Bismol logo on the side <laughs> plates, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, <laughs> I believe I'm, I'm working on one right now. And I've actually done two other ones, and I don't know what the brides think of this, but these are for people's weddings, where wow. they actually get a belt like with like the one I did was like a Ryan and Trisha, someone or other from Canada. Uh, they got this belt, and it has like their names on it, and these Canadian mountains and crap, and that's what they wanted for their <laughs> for their for their belt. It's like their engagement date and their wedding date on the side plates. And I thought that was odd. And then, like a month later, I got another order for another wedding belt, and I'm doing one right now for another wedding belt. So, you know, I I, I can see the bride, the groom doing it, but I don't know these brides. I don't know. <laughs> it seems <laughs> odd that they would go for it. But you would think that they would order tag team belts. Yeah, that's <laughs> that more sense. I did one for Seven Eleven. That one was kind of cool. Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, we're showing that off, and also this. Uh, it looks like the Red Bull. Uh, Manny is a Manny Mania. Am I reading this? Manny right? Mania, yeah, that's a uh, skateboarding contest they do. They've ordered uh, for three years now. They've had belts for that contest, and then that they've also be. done one. Um, I don't know what it stands for, to be honest with you, but it's called BC One, and it's a break dancing competition. Oh, I think I see her here. Here, we'll bring yeah. that up. That one, belt. that one, they actually did the artwork on that. Okay. I can't take credit for that, but it turned out pretty cool. Yeah, there you go. they've got little the little breakdancing guys on the side plates, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I so see that it was a see, unique one. That's for sure. I see it's two segments. Does it spin? <laughs> no, that was, doesn't spin. That's a good idea. I probably should have. The guys it. probably should have spun. That's a good idea. Maybe yeah, I'll well, propose that next there year. You go. There you go. Yeah, little guys, especially like this one here. That's all like out there. You should, you should definitely yeah. spin. If there's any place, whatever you think of the WWE spinner belt, that if it's any place for a spinner belt, it's got to be break dancing. That would make sense. I or, agree with that. Or, or, or maybe a World of Wheels one or something. <laughs> um, we do have some questions here from the chat room. I want to get into. First of all, uh, 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 Shane Amazing says he needs a he needs a wolf belt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's see where is he? Uh, what what uh, favorite belt made so far? I, I I presume that Dragon Gate belt. Yeah, that one. I don't know if it'd be my favorite. That one definitely was the most elaborate one. Um, probably the TNA one, just because it's. You know, a legitimate world championship, mm -hmm. and it's you know, uh, it's not just some rinky dink promotion saying I'm the world champion. It's legitimately the number two promotion in the country. Um, so that one was kind of cool. Then the, the the U.S. one was cool because it's the first one I did for WWE, and you know, growing up watching WWE my entire life, it's kind of cool to be a small part of their production. You yeah, know? even even that I mean, U.S. belt has a lot of history going back to WCW. Uh, yeah. is, uh, is it all the way back to NWA, maybe? I believe so. I believe they, so. when they brought it back, they, you know, brought it on that premise that it's they're bringing back the, the United States Championship. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that world title they do over there. So, right. Uh, let's see. Shane was asking how you created the belt. We went into that a little bit. Uh, on the nameplates, um, Bobby F. J. Town is at, he's from out in Johnstown. Uh, do you do you ask or do they ask for the nameplates ahead of time or do they you find out after like the title? No, I wish they would, but apparently <laughs> it's uh, they don't know who's going to be the new champion. So so, so so they just call you up and say we need this by by TV next week. And, and basically, yeah, they say we need this right away. I wish they would call me ahead of time, but uh, <laughs> yeah. they don't 
they don't do anything like that with me. They don't give away anything with me. But you don't say no to WWE at that point. No. <laughs> just like, okay. And then I hang up and start rushing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. At least it's just the nameplates. That's a, or, or well, that's probably just like the, it's, it's, it's going to take just as long, just like the smaller bell question, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, not as long, but I mean, it's because it's just one small little part, but it's still, you know, it's not quick. Mm hmm. Uh, Bobby F.J. Town says he needs to find a willing lady for an engagement belt with a gr giant diamond in the center. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. Awesome. Awesome. For a company in uh, Hong Kong, which I thought was kind of interesting, that uh, normally everything in America is made in China, and China's come to me in America to make something for them. So that was kind of cool. It was an MMA promotion. That's awesome. Oh, and then we lost our guest. Oh, no. Whoops. Uh-oh. That is trouble. Uh-oh. You there? Where yeah, is? yeah. You know, know, once in a while, Skype has issues. Ah. I don't see you. Um, We might come back here. Oh. Yeah, it didn't huh. bring me back automatically. It should be coming up any second. There you are. There I am. <laughs> Where did I cut off at? Uh, no, you were... It was like a second you were gone. No. I think you even finished the <laughs> sentence. Let me just make a note that I have to make an edit here. <laughs> uh, you know, it happens. Nah, sometimes with Skype, like it, they're peer to peer. So if they're whole network is down, we start dropping calls randomly. I see. So... It's the first time I've ever used Skype, so I'm new to this. Oh, you're doing just fine. <laughs> yep. All right. Um. <laughs> Hey Wills, uh, do you have any questions uh, while while we while we're broken the conversation? That here? was funny. I was just thinking about that. Um, I was just looking at the premiere belt that's on my shoulder. Have you been in contact with them anymore on making other belts for them? No, I haven't actually. Um, I'm not sure what their deal is. To be honest with you, I've uh, they contacted me. Oh, I bet you it's about three years ago now to do their. Um, which one was it? Their United States belt and their MMA belt. And they contacted me. They paid me. I did artwork. And I literally never heard back from them for a year. And then one day I get this email. Hey, we want to, you know, we like that design. We want to go with this now. And then all of a sudden we just started communication again. And then they made the ones that they've made, their MMA one and their United States one, which honestly I haven't seen anybody with those Um like on TV or anything like that. So I don't know how they're selling, if they're selling very well. But the one you did was, the first one I did for them was the just the generic world championship belt, which I was very pleased with. I, I, it's probably one of my favorite, one of my more favorite designs that I've done. I was just going to say, this is, this is one of my favorites. And I mean, Sorg will tell you that right now, uh, even the company I work for, RWA, we use this belt for our heavyweight title. Okay. Well, that's cool. That's a good choice. Excellent. Um, awesome. Hey, and I see you do everything. Uh, fantasy football belts, which has got a lot of people saying we want a fantasy football belt. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten a lot of <laughs> yeah. response from that. Just yeah, I just put that up probably about a month ago, and mm -hmm. getting um, between that and the Twitter account, I've been getting a lot of response on fantasy football. Some people ordering, some people are just looking. They don't realize, you know, that these are real belts, you know. So you're going to be spending a couple bucks for them. But uh, I've got a couple orders for them, and uh, hopefully, you know, this year I'll, you know, just kind of grow and grow and make some more this year for the fantasy football. It's always best to, I can say I can make a fantasy football belt, but if and until people see it, you know, then that, that really jogs in their mind. Oh, look at this! This is cool. I got to get my buddies in on this. And it really, could for anything. It, it's uh, it, it, it is it is pretty tremendous, and that's a that's a really unique title for anything you want to do. Yeah, that's kind of how the philosophy I took when I started this. I'm pushing this as a unique award, not as a wrestling thing. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there's WWE, there's TNA, and then there's a bunch of little promotions, but a lot of little promotions don't have a lot of money, don't have the money to spend on a real championship belt. So mm -hmm. I would kind of be pigeonholing myself if I was only going <laughs> for wrestling promotions. So pretty much, I would say, maybe only about 40% of my business is wrestling belts. And the rest is MMA and special events. Um, and now, you know, these fantasy football ones are starting to take off, too. 
Awesome. Awesome. And you could, uh, I forgot about this one. Hulk Hogan Celebrity Championship Wrestling Belt. Yeah, that one was a last minute fiasco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a belt. I had uh, Jason Hervey called me himself personally uh, uh, five days before they were going to film that show. Oh, wow. It said, uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry to call you late because I had sent them information. I'd bitch off Hervey and uh, entertainment i'd sent them information about getting a belt when i when they first announced they were doing the show months prior to that and um they uh, apparently somebody was supposed to call me you know in a normal amount of time to get a belt and i guess just dropped the ball and never called and they didn't realize till a week before production that they needed they didn't nobody ordered a belt so i had another belt that was almost done for this other promoter that i've done some belts for out in california so I told him the best I could do was retrofit this belt because that belt, if you look at it, it's a little bit different than your average belt. Mm -hmm. I said, I can probably retrofit this, you know, with your logos and your words on it. Um, it's not going to be exactly like your traditional belt, but that's the best I can do as long as the promoter's cool with, and now he's, his belt's going to get bumped back because it was almost done. Now it's going to take another you know month to get his done. He was cool enough to let me do that and... Got the belt done and shipped to them. They got it at uh, 2 o'clock on a Saturday, and they started filming at 4 o'clock Saturday. So got it to them just in time. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, uh, Mike, we've had you silent for a while. Did you have any questions you you had for him? Oh, yeah. Um, sorry well, about the I Skype was gonna, <laughs> Yeah, sorry. My, my Skype kind of crapped out, too. Yeah. Um, being a belt maker, what yeah. do you see in wrestling, like your favorite wrestling title that that you see like the wwe championship belt which a lot of people hate or like the so, exhibition title or right now or uh at, or anytime um either or uh that's a good question right now i would be honest with you i mean i didn't make it but i really like the tna tag team titles i don't know there's something about that design i think they're really sharp I really dig those as far as ones that are being used right now. Um, of all time, I'd say the WWF winged eagle belt that they used in the late 80s through the most of the 90s. And then also the classic intercontinental belt. I always liked that one, too. Like that one Honky Tonk Band and Randy Savage had. Mm -hmm. Those would be my favorites. Did you ever uh, see the Brahma Bull belt that was created for The Rock? I've seen pictures of it online. I've they apparently never used it. I'm not quite sure what the story is behind that, that they never actually used it, but they just recently started showing it at that fan access they do before WrestleMania. They have a whole big um, uh, section of championship belts on display, and mine's one of them, which is kind of cool to see. And then they have that Brahma Bull belt that they never used. Apparently, I also heard that they made one for Rey Mysterio as well that they never used, oh, wow. but I've never seen that, so I don't know if maybe that that's just a rumor you never know who to believe, you know, so I don't know if that's true or not. What's the most uh, used in on, on TV, let's say? What is the most god-awful belt you think was out there? <laughs> there was a very short-lived end of the days in WCW back in 2000, the WCW Cruiserweight Tag Team Championship. <laughs> oh, hold on, I'll see if I can pull this oh, up. Man, There's, bro. If you can't find a picture, I might be able to find one for you. It's You might have to look, like, Google it, I don't know. There's not a very good picture out there. Available. I got world television, and that doesn't look very good. There, I ha always hated the WCW TV title. The, mm -hmm. the latest, the last one they had, I didn't like because it was the most blah. It was just a, the shape and the world television champion and a globe on it, which never made sense to me because if you're the television <laughs> champion, why is there a globe on it? Are you the world champion or are you the television champion? Oh, this is uh, it looks a little blurry. We do have a picture here. Yeah, it's got this like uh, this rectangular shape to it, and like this. I don't know. It's probably, it probably looks like it might have an eagle on it. Does that seem right? Are you talking about the cruiserweight the cru tag? Belts? The cruiserweight tag belts. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty ugly. Yeah, that's, um, that's pretty rough. Those are bad. I never liked the 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 previous um, WCW TV title, where it was just like. A square with a bunch of lines in it. It was like it was like it was almost like they threw it together in five minutes. We need a belt right away. Um, <laughs> you can probably find that one. Steven Regal had that one. Steve Austin when he was the television champion, 
he had that belt. It, it, I don't know. I mean, some people really like it, but I, I was never a fan. I just didn't like the layout of it, but it's my opinion. It, it sounds like you're more of a traditional belt fan. Like, uh, you, you know, know what? It's funny. I am, but none of my belts that I make really look traditional. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't think. But I want to, when I make my belts, I want them to be unique and different yeah. than your yeah. average run of the mill stuff. Because I. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Speaking of unique and different, what did you think of Jeff Hardy's TNA championship? Uh, it was different and unique. <laughs> <laughs> I'm under the impression Jeff Hardy designed that because he's kind of an artsy type of guy. Mm -hmm. uh, it was. If he would have came to me and he's going to pay me to make it, I'd make it. But it certainly wouldn't be the design that I came up with. No. Okay. Definitely, definitely. I, I and, think uh, from Bobby what I read, from the he, chat room oh. is uh, wondering what you think of the WWE Divas Championship. <laughs> the oh. butterfly belt. Uh, they're calling it. <laughs> I think they're calling it the Tramp Stamp Championship of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, I've, I was going to avoid that, but yeah. <laughs> I've actually heard, uh, I don't know if you guys, maybe I shouldn't promote it for you. There's another guy that does podcasts uh, oh, that's that cool. used to work for WWE, uh, Dave Lagana. Yeah. He, uh, the, apparently the writers maybe call I it shouldn't the promote Belts. Oh, no, we talk about him all the He's actually been on the show before. He's oh, okay. He's, awesome. yeah. he's, he's referred to that as the vagina belt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's Again... WWE, they uh, they do all the artwork for all their belts now, mm. so they own it. So then, like, if they come to me to make a belt, that's fine, but they own the belt, so then they can do whatever they want with it after I'm done with it. Um, mm. So they tried, I think they purposely try to come up with really unique stuff that nobody else is going to mistake for something else. Okay, that's it. that brings me to this question of, what do you think about the tag belts that they have? The as some people call the <laughs> penny belts. The penny belts. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have designed not, them, but uh, you know, if you're not they want, the I Spartan look, look of the penny belts. The Spartan <laughs> look. Like, the Trojan warriors. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I guess I understand what they're go where they're going with that, but. I don't know. It, it does feel like a, we make fun of the diva belt. It feels like we always call it the Mattel Barbie belt. And, but I do wonder if Mattel does have a hand in uh, designing some of these belts to make them look truly different from each other so they can sell toy versions of them. Yeah, they might. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they have a whole marketing team that puts thoughts into, you know, the design of them based mm -hmm. off of what they think people will buy. I, I don't know that, but I wouldn't be surprised if that would be the case. They're big. They're corporate. They can do that. They got yeah. the money. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, man. <laughs> well, there was one question in the chat room. Somebody asked, I think it was uh, Shane Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, if WWE called you to replace the spinner belt, would you have any ideas for it? Oh, I always got ideas. I mean, if they come to me with something, I don't, I don't say I don't have anything like on hand that, oh, I'm waiting for them to call, but, uh, you know, if they would come to me, I certainly would come up with something. But again, I don't see them doing that because they want to own all their artwork. So they're not going to freelance it out to someone else and pay them to do it when they have their own creative department to do all that. I think that's why a lot of their belts look so different nowadays because they have like artists that I don't want to say they're not wrestling fans because I don't know them, but artists from outside the wrestling world designing it like in an artsy kind of way, instead of somebody really focusing on say, okay, what does a championship belt look like and how can I do that? Mm -hmm. Which I think is cool. That's what makes it, makes them different. But at the same time, if you're a traditional, if you're a fan of the traditional belt, you're probably not going to be a fan of their belts. <laughs> I, I was just uh, looking through your stuff for, for, for the end here. And I did see uh, Zach Ryder that said the TSA guy said, nice belt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He said, "Nice, what did he say? Nice belt." Are you said, serious, bro? Yeah. Are you serious? This is an internet championship, dude. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that was the best stuff. Hey, the Zack Ryder stuff has been has been uh, talked about just about every week on this show, and we saw that belt come up. That was great. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping he's going to get to use it on TV. I don't know what the plan is for that, but you never know with them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, well, hey, uh, thank you for joining us. I don't want to take you know much more of your evening here. Uh, it's been a great talk. The chat room's been 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 eating this up all night. 
Uh, nope. So tell everybody, uh, you know, where to reach you. I know you're on a lot of social media sites. Uh, tell them everybody, everywhere they need to get a hold of you and, and, and if they want to make a cool belt, too. Okay, well, my website's the easiest way to get to me. It's just www.wildcatbelts.com. W-I-L-D-C-A-T-B-E-L-T-S dot com. And you can also get me on Facebook, just Wildcat Belts. Just search that in Facebook. And I also just started on Twitter, which is at Wildcat Belts. So, if you can just Google me, Wildcat Belts, and I think I'm... You can Google Wildcat Belts, and I'm the first one that comes up. And if you just Google Championship Belts, I'm in the first five, I think, so... Excellent. Yeah, that is correct. You are number you just, five. You just tested that. <laughs> no, actually, I was I, I was curious to see, uh, how his prices compared to other companies making belts. Mm-hmm. So I googled it. How, did, yeah, how they look? Uh, actually, you're lower than the top four. Wow. So, and that I, I, I yeah, if I on, can promote myself a little bit, the one thing that I do that's unique is I don't charge extra for artwork. Okay. I am a graphic designer by trade, so I have the ability to do the artwork myself, whereas some other belt makers just don't. Which mm-hmm. that's just the way it is. So they have to pay someone else to do the artwork. So then it costs extra for people to get belts made. Whereas me, I don't charge anything extra for the artwork because I'm doing the artwork. So mm-hmm. um, my prices are very clear in my pricing that it includes artwork. I'm not going to come to you, you know, once the art, once the belt's done and say, oh, by the way, it's another $500 for the art. You know, I don't mm-hmm. do that. So mm-hmm. and, uh, the belt, just give me a ring. Also, uh, can I get that rushed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear that every other day, and then I tell people what the rush fee is. They're like, "Well, is it that much?" I'm like, I'm <laughs> no, I, you don't want it. Like, like, it it's oh, a heavy bell, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they, how, how much do these belts weigh? Does it ship something that heavy? No, it, no, it's not the it's, rush order no. or rush shipping. It's rush creation. Oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I was just going over the website, and I saw that, and I was just laughing to myself, and I, I figured I'd. I'd Ask you if I, I thought you were asking for a belt for the band Rush. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got quality, speed, and price. Pick mm. two. Exactly. Exactly. I remember that from school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for joining us, uh, Andrew. Everybody check them out, wildcat, wildcatbelts.com. And hopefully, hopefully if this podcast thing kicks off, we'll have a Mayhem Shell uh, belt uh, order coming to you uh, soon enough. That would be great. Just let me know. All right. Thanks a lot. And in the meantime, well, what's up? I just said thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. And in the meantime, while we're trying to afford that belt, hey, check out what you guys are going to see on the uh, Mayhem Show Gold app for this week. Here's a little clip. I would have given it away. Oh, God. If, if someone had said woo, would have given it away. All right, now you, are okay. you okay? Woo! You're okay. You're okay. Good. Shut up. No, I, Mad Mike, you're going to make him gun shy. Don't I think, okay. I think I look like I have a broken neck. Like a person who's also a monkey, all right? <laughs> oh, this is man. important, all right? <laughs> method acting. This is method acting, all right? You're a person who's also a monkey. Oh, okay. uh, Jesus. So, in- <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Dude, he looks like a rejected Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? This is DJ Lunchbox. Uh, you have made the great return to the uh, Wrestling Mayhem show. Good work. That is the second best <laughs> thing you've done today. The first best thing was listening to the first half. Um, and it, why Why am I coming back from the break? Why? It's because it's time for the best segment in the world. Remember when? No, when? <laughs> Alright, stop, that's so freaky <laughs> This week on Remember When uh, Most of our Remember Whens have been Revolved around uh, WWE And that's cool, WWE got us a lot of us under the business But I, my personal Remember When this week Is uh, gonna go back to Don't fucking do oh, Swear to God, <laughs> Wrestle fan. I'm sorry I will break my cock off in your nose There's fuzziness <laughs> on my finger, look Cartoons. I, I wrestle. That's mom. what sex is like, Russell. I wrestle, mom. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, indie indie wrestling. We talk a lot about indie wrestling here on the show, and we have a uh, a wonderful local promotion known as IWC. Um, now, uh, I uh, I wasn't that into indie wrestling, but Sorg, you know, one day said, "Hey, why don't you come to the show?" And so we did. Uh, and um, it was a great show. It was absolutely fantastic. But what, one of the things that really stood out for me was a, uh, a wrestler by the name of Balls Hot Troy Lords. Balls Hot! 
That's exactly right. That's exactly. And he had a match with a local Pittsburgh legend and friend of the show, Hentai. Um, Hentai was a bad guy at the time. And Presto fans, I'm sorry. You're gonna fucking hit the microphone with the monkey. And you're. I swear to God. I'm giving him a seat. This (laughs) guy. (laughs) <laughs> he can lay on my lap, that's fine You anyway, really are a fucking child, aren't The thing you? that, the thing that really mouth. stuck with me Was uh, they had a last man standing match And it was absolutely tremendous They did shit on this match In this match that uh, I, I've never seen happen in the WWE It was fantastic They put themselves through hell um, Like, just flinging themselves Into bleachers and flying off of ladders And doing all this crazy shit and it was tremendous. And I often during that match, I would look around and see, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 people in the audience. And I was like, these guys are killing themselves for our entertainment. And that, I think, uh, made an impression on me more than anything. And then they came out to, you know, bullshit with the fans and have dinner with people afterwards. That is dedication. And um, uh it just it made an impression on me, and I've had a greater respect for indie wrestling ever since. So uh, I don't know where you are today, Balls Hot Troy Lords, but you are the subject of this week's. Remember when? Balls hot. I hope his balls are still hot. What? What do you say? <laughs> there are gremlins. Oh, what do we do? And the dogs doing weird noises. He's it's not dogs. It's gremlins. He's still. He's still high. I back to you, sir. <laughs> ironically enough, oh, I actually you. I actually have the DVD of that match. Do you? That was awesome. That was one of the first IWC DVDs I got, and oh. it, it didn't disappoint. I don't think that was November Pain mm-hmm. one year. That was that was the first IWC so. show I saw, and it was tremendous. Tremendous. Nice. Yep. Nice. Was that also the one where DeMarco popped out of a trash can? No, no that wasn't. Um, that was later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that was before, because I did not see that. Oh. But I heard tale of it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I think we went to, like, one show before we drug oh. you guys along. That's right. Chachi and I, and then Chachi That's never right. came back. Yeah. That's who was correct. I remember yeah. I used to sit there and chant, tuck your wiener to Troy Lords, because I swear his gear was not flattering. Yeah. Just like, um... Fuck what you say. Oh, just like that guy on UFC this weekend. Oh, <laughs> oh! Oh, that was that was unfortunate. What? There was what, there what was happened? a guy at the UFC pay per view, and he was wearing basically like bikini briefs, like a speedo, <laughs> like to a... fight in. And his did yeah. his balls pop out? <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, there there was there was a ball pop. It's a, yeah. it's not balls hot, it's balls out. Balls popped. That's right. <laughs> but um, immediately after that, Dana White held a press conference. He's like, those kind of shorts. No more. No. <laughs> no longer in the... They are banned from UFC. You know, I... All right. I I was watching UFC at Buffalo Wild Wings with my buddy Danny for his birthday. And mm. we theorized that he was trying to be the gold dust of MMA. Mm. Because he goes in there and, you know, your opponent, they don't see you gear up before a fight. So I think it threw his opponent off for, like, the first... Two minutes of the fight because the grape smuggler was really kicking his ass. I don't remember the guy's name, but then I think the ball popped out and everything, you know, went the hell from there. <laughs> I'm sorry, there is some stuff going on in the studio. No one, no one's fucking listening to me. No, we're listening to you. The audio asshole. people got everything you said. Fucking like oh, my, ah! fuck, fuck Mike, I'm having a fun time with DJ Lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> You save that for after the show, sir. Oh, <laughs> nah, tongues. <laughs> He's okay. I'm sorry. All right, all right. There's a lot of wrestling. There's, wrestling. A, there's a lot of good stuff to happen this week. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bad stuff to happen too. DNA. No, that's. I'm not yeah. talking about DNA. I'm talking about there be. was a there's another string of uh of future endeavorness. Yes. Mm. Uh, now, um, uh, Chris Masters. Uh, I can't. It all goes together. I don't know if we mentioned it on the show, pre-show, uh, over dinner, or what. Uh, no, no, Chris no, yeah. Masters uh, was like a D.H. No. Smith, D. H. Smith, Harry Smith, Harry. as uh, mentioned Harry. last night. Melina. Melina. Vlad- Vladimir Kozlov, which makes me sad. Because mm-hmm. I love Vladimir Kozlov. No, mm-hmm. no, no, Melina, no. of course. No, no, and no, it, there were reports no. about Gail Kim um, being, uh, well, saying that she quit, basically. 
uh, the report that she's still in her contract, and they're not letting her out of her contract until it, uh, until it expires. Okay. So, yeah. So I get to sit down and yeah. get paid, it looks like. Yeah, apparently. Um, I like so doing did that. you guys hear the story about Melina this weekend? What happened with Melina? Um, apparently, after she was fired on Friday mm-hmm. and had scheduled a road trip with John Morrison for this weekend. Mm-hmm. Like, just, this. Just, just so they could travel together. And WWE officials would not allow Melina into the arena where the WWE, WWE house shows were this weekend. Oh, wow. Wow. That's that weird. That, that, that's kind of weird, though. I yeah. don't think so. Well, do you have a bring your girlfriend to work day at your place? Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait plus, plus Melina's a drama magnet. At what well, point? it depends on if she buys a ticket or not. That's what I was going to say. She has it. She has the money to buy a ticket. They can't say anything. Really. Oh yeah. Oh, wait, wait. They were like going Friday, right? Yeah. Yeah. They were like going Friday. Who's to say she was wasn't... not allowed into the show on Saturday? Who? Yeah, but when do they start doing their shows? Is it on Saturday? When do they leave? Maybe they're yeah, leaving yeah, the Friday Yeah, yeah. The Raw crew does. The Raw crew does house shows on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then they end their live show, and mm-hmm. then okay, and that was the Raw crew. So she was already on the road with him. Yes. When they fired her. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's but I mean that's a little iffy. I I, I would I would hope they would get a little bit more respect. I mean, you got Cole Cabana popping up backstage left and right, and then you finally he's now, getting but, dark matches. He's getting dark matches now, but he didn't have to. This wasn't talks at the at the pay per view two or three. Yeah, weeks but he ago. wasn't just recently fired. That's true. right. There's a difference. Melina yeah. is not exactly what you call low risk. Okay. Yeah. 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 She'll I throw a fit it's... and make a scene. Yeah. And also, we'll get, I mean, okay. WWE, just like any other business, and the arena, just like any other business, has the right to re- refuse service to anybody. Yeah, it's true. That's true. a legal it's even, thing. Yeah, so. it's not even service. It's, it's, it's getting backstage and I, I your voice. Especially backstage. I just yeah. thought it was something really bad. Even if she that. does buy a ticket, they can just say, sorry, no. Yeah. So yeah. Nope. What, what's your terrible thing? That you... <laughs> I was going to, instead of uh, no shirts, no hymen, no service. <laughs> 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 That's just dumb. Russell oh, fan, if that was the case, no one would be allowed back. Probably, to that's true. Fuck what you say. Fuck that's not true. Say. I actually, I uh, I have a uh, petrified hymen that I keep in my wallet, so I can get anywhere where that sign is. <laughs> On any such <laughs> occasion. Um, wow. I like to be prepared. I'm going to need a photo copy Wait, this, of that. They, they fired, uh, well, I laminated uh, it. <laughs> Shane Amazing in the chat room is saying that they fired, they fired her to give him one more chance. Yeah. What? Really? Is, is, is Morrison him right is now. Morrison threat? Yeah, well, I don't know about pushing the way the way those matches are going. Um, but is he really in that case that 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 Morrison's well, in trouble? Because he, he seems like a pretty big deal when it comes to these things. I don't know. It just seems way too much like and it's definitely not a budget thing. It's just it's, well, no, no, they do. no. It was a budget thing. It was the, it was a budget thing. I, and, well, it, maybe maybe not Molina's case mm-hmm. uh, with Kozlov, Hart, and Masters. It was a budget. Well, case. no, they come around and they look for clearing some room. You look at it like a salary cap. They get rid of a a number of people to uh, to you know to to clear the room for people. Maybe they're bringing up from FCW or they're bringing in from other places. Like Cole uh, So they they yeah like Cole and, or, and the new Sin Cara and maybe. the Kings of Wrestling and mm-hmm. people like Karma. So I mean so mm, and, I miss Karma. So they take this and they look at who's at the bottom of the totem pole and maybe Melina was like maybe rubbing some people the wrong way. Maybe. You know, <laughs> maybe so, actually Melina so, was rubbing a lot of people the right way. Just <laughs> oh. Not new. Just ask John. Well, I just want to see where this. I I just want to see where this plays out on Z True Island story. <laughs> That's true. Da- oh, that Zach's is dad is Zach's dad gonna is going to be crushed. Though. Nobody's more crushed. He's probably more crushed than John Morrison is. Yes. Zach Ryder's father is probably going to pull a um, a scene from Entourage where the guy blew his head off on Z True Island story. <laughs> He's going to turn into the angry grandpa. The angry grandpa. <laughs> no, no, I know what he's going to do. Remember that guy who got arrested for uh, threatening the WWE headquarters when they fired Mickey James? Oh, yeah. yeah. Zack Ryder's father. <laughs> <laughs> we, we didn't know. I want my Melina. I want my Melina. That's, yeah. Man. Man. So that was stuff. That was stuff. That sure that did happen. That was definitely stuff. Yeah. There was, uh, a, there was a TNA pay-per-view this weekend. We watched yeah. it. Uh, a few of us watched it here. We got, we got through half of it. 
Mm. Well, I got. I watched no, the no. Whole. Well, I you got through all of it. You fell asleep halfway through. Yeah. So that's different. Oh, was it Pat's Watcher fan bitch? Oh. No, it was because it was TNA. <laughs> now, you know, the show wasn't bad. Again, not great pay per view necessarily or anything Dude, like that. But... The biggest problem with TNA <laughs> is, is that suck. their pay per views don't feel like pay per views. This is my okay. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, like that. And I was telling problem. and I was telling Sorg this is the entire week. The pay per view is called Hardcore Justice. They didn't have a single fucking no DQ match on the entire card. Yeah, it was stupid. The only one, the only one spot that they had that was hardcore was during that six man tag match. You know, it's like that pay per view should be their extreme rules. Yeah, yeah. I think it was supposed to be hard justice, but like, cause someone called it hard justice on Impact. Yeah, and then. They didn't have a new graphic for Hard Justice because they kept showing the Hardcore Justice. Right. They graphic. Don't... So I think someone fucked up by showing the Hardcore Justice graphic. But they were advertising it as Hardcore Justice. They were advertising it as the viewer discretion advised bullshit hmm. mm-hmm. that they yeah. don't advertise for their other pay per views. So it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, well, maybe really... they were just warning us it was going to be a bad show. Really... <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, it really seemed like the marketing wasn't meeting up with what the booking was doing for the month. So, and, and that's unfortunate. You know, the biggest, but the thing, you know, the matches, you know, the undercard was great uh, as far as I was concerned. It wasn't really horrible matches. But the main event, it, you really started showing your age to a point. And I'll see if I can pull a picture back up of, uh, of, of that pay per view like we were showing earlier. But. You looked at Sting, you looked at uh, Kurt Angle, and again, you know, I mentioned Kurt Angle, <laughs> whatever he's doing for his, uh, you know, his build or whatever, he just looks like he's not necessarily, I don't want to say not working out, but not not working on the arms maybe so much. Um, uh, Sorg, I think he's cutting weight for the Olympics. For the Olympics, okay. But it, 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 his tights looked weird, uh, the, the Sting looks looks ridiculous in that paint, and, and for some reason had a gray version of his tights. And just, like, look at the picture of them facing off. Whatever history there was there or anything like that, whatever you thought of Sting, it was just, like, it, it felt its age and it felt ridiculous. There's no way you could take that, that main event seriously at that point. Yeah. I mean, it was just... Especially just, after what happened. Yeah, it just the image. And, the, yeah, and then what happened at the end there. And don't get into spoilers for me or anything like that. Just face value, you know, it's Tuesday. I don't know what a spoiler is. That pay-per-view by itself was just weird you know that that ending was weird hogan comes out uh with a chair and a- angle shoes him away and then uses it on sting okay i yeah i read the spoilers for um for impact mm-hmm. oh my god it couldn't get more convoluted if it tried you know and, and it doesn't seem like something that's like well i gotta wait to smack out or uh the impact smack impact whatever smack impact, back uh, smack back smack, smack back, back. To find out what's smack going back. on, it's like no, it's like really, come on, it was a pay per view. I'll and you're be your smack it, You're gonna do this, you know, Ooh, uh, and that's just that's 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 just silly. Mm. Just, just well, silly. think about it. Um, from the interview we had earlier with Andrew, mm-hmm. look how long it took them to debut the belt that he made. That is, true. he had that done in October. Well, they didn't. To be fair, Jeff Hardy was the champion, and Jeff Hardy won his own belt. That's true. That's true. Yeah. It's- yeah. But I don't know. It, it it it's it's again with TNA with the you know guys on top that are showing its age. It's not like they're mixing it up like maybe with Sting and Anderson or or Angle and some of the young guys that are maybe putting them over. I I, I don't understand it, and it's See, it's it's just it's rough and it's back to the same old stuff. You know, uh, CM Punk was talking as hey, it's business as usual when uh, <laughs> when I left and now 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 we've seen his champion again. It's business as usual for TNA at the at, at the top. Basically, all up and down the card. They had a great pay-per-view with Destination X. We loved it. It was something different. And it's now back to business as usual. Business Sork. as usual. Sork. Um, can I bring up the PWI 500 for a second? Oh, please. Yeah, you did. You sent this email earlier this week uh, uh, well, detailing the friends of the show that are on the, on the PWI. Yeah. Um, it just kind of illustrates what the problem with TNA is. Okay. Because, like... The PWI 500, a lot of people don't agree with how it's, you know, made up or anything like that. People say it's a bullshit list, but usually at the top, there's good representation from WWE, TNA, 
and Japan. Okay. Right? Okay. The top ten is Miz, Randy Orton, John Cena, Kane, Takashi Segura, Alberto Del Rio, Mr. Anderson, Rey Mysterio, Eddie Edwards, and CM Punk. That is there a... is one TNA wrestler. Yeah, yeah. One TNA wrestler. Do you know why there's only one TNA wrestler? Because TNA never commits to a push of anybody. There is no top face in TNA. And it really thinks like everybody, it really feels like everybody in TNA is in like a hoarding pattern. Yeah. You know, regardless of what they are doing with them or not doing with them, it, it just feels like they're going and doing it wrestling by the numbers at this point. Uh, and, yeah. and Mr. Anderson is the only one that's kind of defined a character over the last year and, and done, has he? done his thing. Yeah, has he? Has really? he? He's been jumping back and forth between hate, feet, face, and heel mm-hmm. so much that the crowd literally does not know what to do when he is uh, cutting a promo. But I think I still think the, the this whole asshole thing and the and you know the and, asshole and thing's pro wrestling is fake stuff. I no, I thought he, I thought it was it's been a little long in the tooth maybe at this point. But he, I I think he's he's kind of brought himself a little bit more definition than anybody else did around there. I mean, you know, look at anybody else on that that point of it. I mean, you got you know, Bully Ray redefined himself, which actually I don't think he's doing no, too bad. Bully in it. Ray is the only defined character on TNA. Yeah, I hate to say because I'm not that big of a I'm not that big of a fan of Bubba Ray Dudley. Yeah, but Bully Ray is mm. the best character TNA has. The absolute best character besides Eric Young. Mm-hmm. The best heel TNA has is Bully Ray, because you know where he's coming from. He's a dick. He does <laughs> classic. <laughs> heel food. Well, no. He's a dick. Yeah, he does he's classic dick. heel things like volunteering others to beat people up. He threatens to beat people up, then he runs away through the crowd. He blindsides people. He is a classic heel, and mm. he is one of the only people in TNA that you can define as a heel. And you got Mr. Anderson is more kind of trying to be Stone Cold. Oh, God, I'm yep. failing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's desperately wanting to be Stone Cold. Hmm. We already had yeah, one of those in TNA. He was called Shark Boy. <laughs> Shark Boy did a better job at Stone Cold than he did. Yes, Shark Boy did an amazingly better job at, at Stone Cold than Anderson does. Yeah, but still, uh, but anyways, you know, another lackluster pay per view. This is the usual. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. You know, nothing else really stuck out from there. So. So, so Sorg, are you still watching Impact, or are they? Exhausted your trial period with him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be honest, I, I I've been light watching it, not not for you know not wanting to, uh, just just schedule is okay. the thing. I caught like the first half all the way up to. I thought it was interesting to have the Ultimate X match uh, with Abyss. You know, yeah, that was a, that was, uh, a that cool was match. interesting. That was interesting that they did that. Um, but you know, other than that, you know, I, I, it is kind of the show that I go to when you know to, for something different. I don't look for the, like you know, I'm not looking for the best thing ever, you know. Just like I went to Ring of Honor for the best, you know, for for something different. But I really didn't like, I didn't love their show on on HDNet, you know. It's not, it wasn't the best wrestling show on HDNet. Just the production just felt very bland in comparison. Um, and I think that's because it got handed over to HDNet and the way they handled it. it and it just felt, it, it didn't feel like it had the energy that like even well, if you picked up a Ring of Honor DVD did. Sorg, I mean, from what I was able to see of that, it looked like ECW on TNN. It's like they tried to duplicate the production values of WWE, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it doesn't uh, work. Yeah, yes and no, yes and no. I mean, yeah, I think this is like a fourth tier uh, uh, cable network, you know. And yeah, it but is, so was and it is, and it is, uh, you know, it, it, Ring of Honor is not handling the production when HD when they were on HD Net. There was an HD Net truck there. It was HD Net cameras, cameramen, everything. So I think that lends a little bit to it. Yeah. Um, so I'd be interested to see what happens when they are on the Sinclair, syndicated on the Sinclair networks to see uh, what is going on with it. I don't know if Lagana is still officially involved in the production. I know he does the IP reviews still. Um, but, you know, hopefully it is, he is and, uh, and, and it comes off pretty interesting. So. Um. So what else we got here? There was Raw last night. There was Raw last night. <laughs> so, Raw was pretty great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is interesting that we got uh, st- uh, we we got two faces, guys. Like yep. you know, one way or another, we got two faces going on here. Mm-hmm. 
Um, oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, well, it depends on who you ask. Yeah. Uh, Come on. No, it I, depends on I who like you ask. I like both guys, but I... I don't know about that. No? I, well, think, thing I, I think they're setting up for something... Completely unexpected on Sunday. They're going to find one one way or the other on the, Sunday, they, aren't they? They have to. But mm-hmm. the thing I was telling Sorg before the show, from what we saw last night, the biggest heel in this whole thing is John Laurinaitis. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, there is. Yeah. I'm definitely the biggest threat right now. <laughs> that is probably the worst impression That's I've ever heard. That's the worst I'm sorry. Laurinaitis I've ever heard. Shut that up. Is, that is rough. That is rough. I'm sorry. Dude, Jesus. dude. Leave leave the impressions to to someone else's gimmick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mike. <laughs> Dig it. <laughs> but still, I but, mean, go ahead. I think I think CM Punk and John Cena could have talked like that for two hours last night, and it still would have been and better than anything TNA's put on the past month. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, because that was an amazing back and forth promo. Yeah, and it's it shows the difference, you know. It shows like you know, it just TNA stuff seems to just fall fall flat in comparison. So I mean, when you you were watching it, you saw Cena mm-hmm. almost breaking out laughing. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's good because Punk was doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. But like they were laughing not because they thought it was funny, but they were laughing like, "Oh, you." Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, like they weren't laughing because, you know, they they weren't being in character or whatever. They were laughing because you could tell both of them were kind of shooting from the hip. Mm-hmm. Especially when Cena, you know, said he has the five moves of doom. He, you know, he would be better if Indeed. he embraced his inner heel, for Christ's mm-hmm. sake. <laughs> like, he actually said that on camera. Yeah, yeah. It, in the best cam- comic book guy voice I think I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was perfect. What it was, was uh, they did step out of their characters last night. Mm-hmm. It was... They broke the fourth wall I, a bit. What, like I told Sorg on the way over, it, it the best part of Raw was that uh, 20-minute in-ring activity. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they broke their characters... And it was two friends sitting around having a beer, busting on each other without the beer. Mm-hmm. 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 And, and you know, I think some worry that the, there's too many inside jokes with the internet. But for those that don't read all this stuff that they're referencing, it looks like two guys, two wrestlers digging on each other for whatever you know, whatever Reason. angle they're taking on. You know, uh, and and you know they may not understand that this is the stuff that everybody on the internet's saying, but the general fan, the normal wrestling fan, it just sees that this is a great back and forth, and they're into it, no right. matter which Sorry. guy they're, it, it's they're the behind. the internet era. They are they are bringing this into the internet. Yeah, just yeah. like the Attitude Era brought us backstage and mm-hmm. brought us live TV. This angle right here is the genesis of the internet era. It, 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 well, They're bringing so it, us into the world of the cyber geek about wrestling. So you're saying while while the Attitude Era uh, 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 pulled back the curtain, this one's now letting us in the curtain with them. This one's letting us tweet the curtain. Okay, <laughs> oh, that, oh, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, actually. this one's taking us out of the camera and putting us in their pockets. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I said these. People, I mean, look, they, how they, many times have they called Zack Ryder the internet champion on TV? Mm-hmm, There's mm-hmm. no belt. You would need to be on the internet and watch you know Zack that. Ryder's thing to actually know what they're talking about. But they're leaving those breadcrumbs, just like they kind of always leave those bread breadcrumbs to come to WWE.com for a little bit more, maybe a little bit extra videos, superstars, NXT. Now they're leaving and, those breadcrumbs out because they, you know, like we talked about before, WWE is, has has deputized each of their their employees, their wrestlers, to be their own brands, be a portion of their own brand representing the entire WWE brand. So yeah, and- when they're when they're pushing off for to, for um, you know uh, Zack Ryder, uh, you know to you know they say hey go check out what he's doing. They love that because it brings you into Zack Ryder. Now you want to see Zack Ryder on the show, and and it it keeps you engaged. You know outside to come back to the Raw. And not only, like, they, how many times have they referenced that Comic-Con footage? Mm-hmm. Yet they've never showed it. On TV, yeah. 
Yeah, you're They've right. They've never showed on TV. You're right. You're and, right. And you know what? If you go to the to WWE.com, mm-hmm. they have a really, really cool set of exclusive interviews with CM Punk, with Triple H, with John Cena about this whole angle. Mm-hmm. And they had an interview with Rey Mysterio where he was kind of pissed off that he didn't officially get his rematch right away. Mm-hmm. Hmm. He, he almost seemed like a different Rey Mysterio, and it was actually kind of a cool video. And, but they're not showing any of this on the show because they want people on the internet. Mm-hmm. They want people looking up, oh, why did John Cena say heel? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. You know? They want people to look up five moves of Doom. Yeah. <laughs> so go go ahead go ahead and let, let people in that fourth wall, you know? And it's a little more effective than the uh, Between the Bell segments they have on there, where, where it's just a Hornswoggle skit. Or a Hacksaw, <laughs> or a Hacksaw. Remember they're doing the Hacksaw Jim Duggan skit? I mean, how much they put into it. And, you know, we did talk about that, too, about superstars in NXT. What is the place for superstars in NXT that, you know, okay, NXT is kind of ridiculous. It I is. understand that. <laughs> but still, it, it's something like, okay, this is something that they still have to actively produce. You know, on the, it, it, it adds another hour to each of their nights between the two of them. And, uh, and it's something else. Some writer, they're paying, has to deal with this. Whatever you think of the stuff coming out of NXT, somebody has to come up with that. Yeah. And, and, and it's a place for, like, hey, I haven't seen Hornswoggle for, like, months on, on, on SmackDown. He's still there. No you matter, know? Yeah, it no gives matter. people a place. It gives people, you know, like you said, a place to test out, I think. Yeah, to test the waters and to try stuff with their characters and to, you know, see, well, maybe this will work, maybe this won't work. Mm-hmm. You know, just... And it, to a small enough audience where it's not going to make that big of a difference. Yeah, yeah. And maybe they'll find gold there, and that's when they, they, they bring them up. You know, I think NXT is their version of WrestleLicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that, of course. Without the costumes. But maybe they're playing with that to see if people like it. Yeah. And also, are they experimenting with that? They went ahead and took both those programs on t- off TV when the contracts went up. You know, just, just transitioned well, them to right To be fair, over. the contracts are only up in America. Okay. I believe they're okay. still on TV and foreign markets. So it kind of like how we have Explosion is only on in foreign markets for TNA? Yes. Okay, yes. so that makes <laughs> sense. So it's not just we're just producing this for the internet at yeah. this point. And, and and in other countries where wrestling is still the hot thing, they're getting watched. Right. They're probably getting watched in a percentage like Raw is. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, yeah, of course, because overseas people are craving wrestling. Not, yeah, like not, They're craving stuff from the big two companies. Yeah. That's why they, the overseas tours do so well. They're not over it like everybody in America is. Because yeah. everybody went through it, you know, got, you know, digested America is kind of like the WWE's impact zone. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, well, as no, a whole. like some, some markets have just become oversaturated with it where they won't react. Like, last night's crowd mm-hmm. was virtually dead until that last segment. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And there, there were some really good matches on there. Like, there was actual storyline development in a Divas division. Oh, yeah. When was, when was the last time we said that besides Karma? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, I, I have a really quick story. I think everybody's going to get a kick out of. Uh, if, if you're watching the she's watching the, 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 the websites, Pro Wrestling, Pro Wrestling.net is one I read and I get a lot of my news from. Uh, they reported last night that Cole Cabana was supposed to be backstage at Raw. <laughs> and of course, we've heard about him being on uh, dark matches and everything recently, of right. course. So, I, you know, we were we were doing the Google Hangout. Uh, Bobby F. J. Town was joining us, and Russell Fan were doing weird things since we were both in the same room. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but you know, it was funny, you know. And, and yeah. again, I invite everybody, you know, follow us on Google Plus and, and, and uh, join the Hangouts. They're, they're, they're a lot of fun during Raw. Um, but they, they retired. They, they, uh, they, they re- well, I retweeted this, of course. They responded, "Hey, no, ca- no, Cabana at Raw. Want to know why it was reported on our site? Ask correspondent Alex Bradley via email, and they gave out his email. You can go to the That's pro, awesome. you can go pro wrestling net on Twitter and, and find out what that email is. But uh, yeah, they just don't, don't send more, bad information to pro wrestling dot net. More of the story: Don't fuck with pro wrestling dot net. They will fuck your day up. <laughs> yes, yes, that was, that was tremendous. So don't spend fake shit." To 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 wrestling mayhem show because who knows what will be. Yeah. So. <laughs> Ooh, actually, Stop turning you me down. Stop turning me down. Just getting angry. Stop turning me down. Just getting angry. So. Fuck with those buttons. <laughs> Stop. 
Anyways. Because I go to say something, and I'm turned down, <laughs> and then I have to repeat myself, and it kills what I'm trying to say. Would you say, Chachi, I wasn't paying attention? <laughs> uh, fuck you. Fuck what uh, you say. Fuck what you fuck say. What you say. <laughs> All right. I think it's time to wrap it up, guys. That was a great show. Uh, so it's time to learn, hey, hey, wheels. Yes. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Fuck what you say. <laughs> That's exactly what I learned. No, just kidding. Um, I think, I think what it's I a given that we all learned that this was, week. Yes. Uh, John Cena does understand. He does have five moves of doom. Yes. But he doesn't care. Don, Don Cena's making more John money than John Cena doesn't have five moves of doom. He added a dropkick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, come on, John. And a stinger slash. I'm yeah, sorry. I saw that. That was like, wow. If any wrestler can get paid as much as he does through enough five moves of doom, I think they'll be pretty happy with it. Mad Mike, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, man. What did I learn? Um, I learned that... Um, well, I was going to say one thing, but I know it's going to be WrestleFan, so I'm not going to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that uh, TNA still, you know, true to form, opens up with the only match I want to see. And then, unfortunately, <laughs> makes me sit through the rest of their shit. Jeez, jeez. And um, plus, uh, winner spits, not swallows. Huh? It's good Whoa. to know that. She Whoa. spits blood. Whoa. Well, Rest- no, no, she spits. Giggity. She doesn't swallow. Wrestle I mean, fan. Blood. That's just wasteful. Wrestle fan, and your first, so your first appearance in the studio. Goldstein. What did you learn from wrestling, and then what did you learn from being in the studio the oh, first time? Good lord, um, I learned from, <laughs> I learned from wrestling this week that Booker T got a really big paycheck at WrestleMania. <laughs> That's right. Oh, wait, oh, wait how the that. fuck was that what you learned? Because uh, Booker T teaches me that. Then I learned Oksana <laughs> is a hot brunette. That that's she, that she wasn't brunette, but she was whatever. And that was brunette. Uh, okay. So we were we were, we were uh, watching SmackDown yesterday. Mm. Recap it on the whole thing, and it was the match. Uh, it was Daniel Bryan's match, and trying to illustrate, you know, why Daniel Bryan, you know, cash is going to cash in at WrestleMania, blah blah blah, and <laughs> Booker D's perspective of the whole thing is it's for the paycheck because he got a really big paycheck at wrestlemania and he wouldn't <laughs> stop talking about the fact that he got I mean, a really big paycheck at that, wrestlemania hey will did you know booker t got a really big paycheck at wrestlemania i have heard that <laughs> i have heard that exactly so wait wait if he got a really big paycheck at wrestlemania the one where he lost the triple h is that reparations <laughs> well, oh. I don't know, but all I know is Booker T got a really big paycheck at WrestleMania. Fuck what you say. Oh my. <laughs> Ninja. And what, what did you learn? Uh, I, I, you turned wait, me wait, down. Oh, he's not done. I'm not done. I have to yeah, learn what I learned in the studio. He's, he's young. He learns lots of things. I was supposed to say what I learned in the studio. I learned in the studio that you guys are all fucking crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did you not know this? That is true. That's what I learned. You can't argue with that. He's going to get raped. And I learned the stoke monkey is sweaty. <laughs> the stoke monkey is dead. And He's sweaty. Dead, dead. He's dead and sweaty. Chargers. Hmm. Chargers. Chargers. I am going to fucking destroy you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. We've never said that on the uh, on the show before. Chargers? What? Uh, we've, I don't think we've ever called him Chargers on the air. Chargers? Chargers. I want some chachos. LB, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I thought we... No, he asked you. Yeah, I tried we to ask just you, asked. but I was muted. And you cut him off. No, you weren't muted. Because I wasn't finished. Chachi got stepped Step on. Step on me again! <laughs> Whoa, WrestleFan <laughs> just came. By the way, my name in the Wrestling Mayhem Fantasy League is Stepping on Chachi. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. I need to check my name on there. I think I screwed it up. Um, so I learned Chachi, since you asked. No, I don't care anymore. Uh, <laughs> fuck what you say. Bob, Bobby's I I learned is much better. I learned uh I learned that the mirror is can be used in a hardcore match. Yeah. Wow. 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 And there's a whole com- and it, it was it was a weapon and a metaphor. Mm-hmm. So of course the crimson. So who's gonna have the seven year bad luck? I, thought, I don't know. I was wondering. I, about I thought that. you were gonna learn that I'm not a paradox. I'm a 
I'm a what? It's not for Enigma? wrestling. No, no I'm a... No, you're an anomaly. Anomaly. Because we watched Raw together in the same time zone, so you're an anomaly. Uh, Is yeah. he a glitch in the Matrix? That's right. Oh, that's deja vu. Hey, LB. Shit, they changed uh, something. Hey, LB. Oh, noes. What? LB. What's up, sir? What'd you learn from wrestling? Mm, I learned a couple of things from wrestling. Mm-hmm. One of them is that uh, Eve is the future of this business. <laughs> what? <laughs> she's there. She just we can all learn a lot from her. All of us. I agree. Learn a lot from Eve. And the other thing I learned is sort of from wrestling because this is a wrestling show, and I learned it on the show. Um, we would all do a lot better to uh, channel Black Dynamite each week when we read things. That was pretty good. Fuck pretty what you good. say. Yeah. Fuck what, Fuck you, what say. you say. Fantastic. Fantastic. Did you? How many times I gotta tell you don't ever interrupt my kung fu? <laughs> Chachi, what'd you learn from this week for really kung well. fu? <laughs> Thank you. I learned that cell phones aren't magic. They get from one tower to the other on landlines. Spread the word. Huh. <laughs> I don't think that has to do with wrestling. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I don't even think that's real. I think that's what he got. That's, 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 that's what you got. All right. That's what you got. So, uh, you got. From okay, the from chat the, room. From the chat room. Yes, please. Bobby F. J. Town learned that Zack Ryder should defend the Internet Championship on Superstars, and he also learned not to put up with G- DJ Lunchbox's Kung Fu treachery. <laughs> <laughs> just, and right. the Wolf learned that ever since CM Punk and Triple H took over WWE, it's been golden. If you don't believe me, fuck what you say. What would you say? Oh, oh. So, what do we think is going to happen at the main event of Sum- SummerSlam to close it out? Oh, we didn't really talk about SummerSlam, I guess. Um, yeah. Cena heel well, turn. I mean, because there, there's only four matches booked, so why would anyone want to see that shit? Uh, well, yeah. We, we, you know, the big thing is uh, tri- 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 Triple H. If Triple H helps <laughs> Cena, it, uh, I agree with what I've been hearing that it's 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 kind of like into The Rock being the corporate champion. Not that they're reforming the corporation, Russell fan. I think they will. You think they're going to do? They're, no. they're, you think they're going to do a corporation thing? Yeah, I think the they'll corporation have... versus the indie well, squad, or or they'll have Triple H and John Cena as the corporation. Too bad, I'm playing with it. Taji's <laughs> <laughs> seeing himself on TV and is having fun with it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> or they'll have Triple H and John Cena as the corporation, and the f- main faction will be. CM Punk. <laughs> Dong Jing. <laughs> 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 the main action will be CM Punk, Death Phoenix, Natalia, uh, Cole Cabana. That could be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby <laughs> and Bobby FJ Town also learned, and that shit got real in AON this week. Oh, and our truth oh hates God. spiders. Oh my God! Our truth and the spiders. Oh my Give me God. some spider soup. I want the our truth and the new Spider-Man movie. It's, yeah. it's the best stuff. Book it's it. The best stuff. Spi- you, get carrots, you get some carrots. You get some celery, and you get a big old turnip, <laughs> and you make some spider soup. That was, that was the best. Stuff. You know who didn't that eat that spider stuff. soup? Little Jimmy. Little oh. Jimmy. Yeah, aside from that last promo, that was the best Fuck thing. Fuck what there. you say. Fuck what you <laughs> say. Fuck what our truth say. Yeah. What? Oh, <laughs> uh, guys, every, we all we all enjoyed your, our time with you this week. Thank you, Andrew, from uh, Wildcat Belts, for joining us. Thank yeah. you, Wrestle thank Fan, you. for thank, coming down thank here. Me. Thank, thank you for showing me the you. glory of the 7 Eleven Championship. Yes, the, indeed. The, oh, oh, we he, didn't stop by 7 Eleven. Fuck. We can stop by. There's a 7 Eleven on the Good. way to the airport. Okay, I want a collector cup. <laughs> We're taking them back at four am, in the morning. I am boycotting all Seven Eleven collector cups until there's a CM Punk one. There you go. Okay, mm. um, okay. Fan, how much longer are you in town for? About what time is it? It's like 11. five hours. Oh, five hours. Yeah, yeah, well, there's plenty of time. You. That's plenty of time. Plenty of time. <laughs> for what? well, that's for something else. But I, I want to do this live on the air. Shut. The- <laughs> Get the fuck away. Wrestle fan. Okay, I thought you were going to chop me. No, Never mind. Chop Never mind. There's a, there's a microphone on the way. Wrestle fan. I want you to know that we care about you. Aww. Okay. And I want to show it in a very special way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. It's <laughs> <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> Chachi, move that. Me need the move this camera so it's got. Oh, there we go. Don't, don't do anything my mother wouldn't be proud of. What, are you kidding me? <laughs> Everything I do, your mom's proud of. 
That's where you came from. <laughs> Let me move my mic out of the way. There you go. Oh. Uh, That's not your mic. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking of all these songs in my head to sing the rest of I really hope this is none of them are none of them are good. Alright. I was okay. At least least you're singing. You got what I need. Wrestle fan, you. You got what I need. I'm too busy looking at Jack. And you say he's just a friend. And you say he's just a friend. I'll say it in you! You got what I need! I knew you were gonna lick me! Oh, guys, check it out. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. He tastes like flour. Mayhem Show. He tastes like flour. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412206 WMS0. God, there's so much going on. We're on iTunes. You know where to find us. Go go, go comment and everything. WrestleFan, thanks for joining <laughs> us. We'll see you guys next week. Out. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait.